I appreciate y'all joining me this Sunday morning. Hopefully, everybody is having a wonderful weekend and getting yourself a little bit of rest and relaxation, a little bit of R&R. &R. Um, we're going to have a jam-packed hour, hour and a half uh, discussion about building wealth and getting yourself to your pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Q&A. If you got a thousand dollars and how that thousand dollars will change your life forever. If, 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 if you follow the blueprint. See, that's the key. You got to follow the blueprint. If you're willing to follow the blueprint, listen, you can do whatever you want to do in this life. If you're willing to follow the blueprint. So we're going to talk about the blueprint. We're going to answer y'all's questions. Um, as we get more and more people in the chat, hopefully we will. You just never know on this YouTube platform who they will uh, show your content to and who they will let know that your content is out here online. You just never know. So you just, uh, you roll with what you got. So as y'all pop into the chat, uh, let me know where y'all are from. Um, looks like uh, we got a few people coming in, just a few. Um, you guys understand I'm going to be doing these live streams every Sunday um, as long as I'm able to, obviously. The goal here is to answer your questions, right? And in order to do that, we got to have, you know, some type of uh, system that we follow in order to do that because, you know, we can have a hundred people in here. We can have a thousand people in here. You just never know, right? You just never know when it comes to these live streams and, and, and who the algorithm will let know you're out there. But here's what my recommendation is. In this Q&A uh, for the next hour, hour and a half, depend upon how it's going, um, my job here is to answer your questions to the best of my ability using my 25 years worth of experience as a commercial banker, as a real estate investor, as a stock market investor, as a, a, a person who has helped companies start businesses, scale businesses. I've also started my own business from zero and scaled it to a multi-million dollar business over the last several years. So I got an expertise around all the things that I just mentioned. And it's my job here to, to answer your questions. Now, in order to do that, of course, like I said, we get a thousand people in here. If we get 300 people in here, everybody's going to be asking questions. Just like right now, everybody is saying hello. They're checking in and I appreciate it. My recommendation, if you want your question answered, use Super Chat. That's the best way to do it, to get yourself at the top of the, the question list. Because like I said, as people come in here, and I don't know how many are going to be in here, honestly. Um, it could, like I said, it could be a couple hundred people come in. It could be a thousand people in here. So the more people come in, the more questions will be asked. Then I got to try to figure out. And for me, the best way to do it, instead of trying to scroll through every question is just whoever is sending super chats. That's who it pops up on the screen. That's who I get. So if you want your question answered, uh, then think about Super Chat. You don't have to do Super Chat. You can put your question in here, but, but there's no guarantee it's going to get answered depending upon how many people come in the chat. Right now, we got almost a couple hundred people in here, and, and it, we don't, we, we've been in the live four minutes. So I, I don't know. We'll see. But the goal here is, is to answer your financial questions, right? Your questions about investing in paper assets, your questions about investing in real estate for income. Your question about businesses. Hey, Richard, how do I start a business and what should, what should be some of the, 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 the steps that I do leading up to starting my business? When is it appropriate to get business funding? How do I scale my business? How do I use social media to help me scale my... Those are the questions you should be asking. Hey, Richard... I got a thousand dollars. You know, I got a I got a five year window. I got a 10 year window. What should I be putting that money in, in your opinion, 
in order to give me the best chance to multiply and get to financial freedom? These are the questions we should be asking, right? Hey, I'm thinking about buying real estate for income. What, what, what are some things I should be doing in order to prepare myself from, from, a, from a financing standpoint to be bankable? What should, what should I look out for? What should I be doing? What will the bank ask me for? This is my first time buying real estate for income. What will they ask me for? Do I already need to have a lease in place before the bank will consider giving me a loan? What if I buy a fixer-upper that needs money to, to, to rehab the property? Can I go to the bank and get a loan for that as well? These are the questions you should be thinking about and asking, right? As we dive into this, uh, this Q&A for the next hour, hour and a half. Now, keep in mind, guys, hit that thumbs up button for me when you get in here. If you appreciate the, this, this Sunday morning live where we're going to be taking questions from you guys, do me a big favor. Hit the thumbs up when you get here uh, just so that I know we're locked in. You're rocking with me. And like I said, we're going to be on here for an hour and a half or so, depending upon how things are moving. We may stay longer. We may, I may cut it shorter if we're not getting a lot of questions and a lot of participation. So it depends on you guys and, and, and what level of questions you have will determine how long we stay on. But, but, but I've kind of set the ground where while, I, while I'm here and the kind of questions that I will answer. And I've kind of figured out how to use some of the, the, the features in the chat. So, hey, ask good questions. Be, be respectful in here. If you're not respectful, I'm, I'm going to excommunicate you. Some of y'all don't know what that means. Go to the $1 trillion research lab and put in excommunication. It'll tell you what that means. But if you ain't acting right, I'm going to excommunicate you. If I can find you on here, I'm going to excommunicate you. So understand this is, this is a positive helping people. I don't need nobody in here trying to, you know, scam people. If I catch you in here trying to scam, I'm going to excommunicate you. I'm just letting you know. So just, just be, be, be prepared for that. Also, guys, uh, do me a big favor as you come in. Um, consider following me on Instagram. That's down in the description box. My Instagram uh, link is down there. It's Richard Fain, Millionaire Mentor. Please do me a big favor. Get down there and uh, follow me on, on Instagram if you don't mind. I'm trying to rebuild an Instagram profile. You guys know I had 90,000 followers on my Richard Fain 28 page. It got taken down by Instagram for whatever reason. They never gave me a reason. So I'm starting over. Now it's Richard Fain Millionaire Mentor. So if you don't mind, get down to the description box, click on that Instagram link and give your boy a follow. I got, I'm telling you guys, I got some really good stuff that I'm gonna be putting on the Instagram page that I'm not gonna be putting on YouTube. Most of the stuff that's gonna be going on the Instagram page is gonna be about my lifestyle and the things that I'm doing to build wealth through, you know, through the various things I do that I don't talk about on YouTube, which it's a lot. So, so if you want to catch that glimpse of me, like I said, get down to that Instagram page and follow me there. I, I certainly would appreciate it. Also, last thing, and then we're going to dive into the, dive into the Q&A. Um, you know, Moomoo, my brokerage app that I'm using um, for all of 24 and beyond to, to build my, my, buy my paper assets, build wealth for myself. I'm going to be using that app, Moomoo. And Moomoo has got an offer for you guys. They're going to give you seven free stocks when you put $100 in your Moomoo account. Now, you need that Moomoo account. Why? Because you're going to be buying paper assets to build wealth. So they're going to give you seven stocks when you deposit $100 in your Moomoo account. Now, you might say, well, golly, Richard, what are those seven stocks? Magnificent seven. For those of you guys who don't know what the Magnificent Seven is, go to the $1 trillion research lab and take a look at it. It's the Magnificent Seven. They're going to give you fractional shares of the Magnificent Seven, seven of them, when you put 100 bucks in your new Moomoo Moo brokerage account. So let me tell you something, guys. If you don't know who the Magnificent Seven is, go look at some of my older live streams and videos or just go to the one trillion dollar research lab and tap in and, and search type in search magnificent seven and boom it's going to come up and tell you who those guys are they are all big boy heavyweights and moo moo is going to give you a fractional share seven of them seven fractional shares of the magnificent seven 
when you open your new brokerage account and you put $100 in it. So go down to the description box, click on that link. If you wanna follow me and rock with me, and, 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 and if you're gonna be listening to what I'm gonna be buying in paper assets, and you may wanna duplicate that, you may wanna copy that plan, you may wanna use the same brokerage app that I'm using. You don't have to have just one brokerage app, guys. You can have multiple brokerage apps. I have four of them. But the Moomoo app is the one that I use on a daily basis. So get down to the description box. Click on that if you don't mind, if you want to follow me. Uh, if you want to follow me and do what I'm doing from a buying paper asset standpoint. Like I said, they're going to give you seven free stocks when you put 100 bucks in the account. Now, of course, you want to put more than that in there. Because why? You want to buy paper assets over these next 10 years to build wealth like I'm doing. So I'm going to be buying paper assets over the next 10 years every single day every single month, every single year for 10 years in order to double my net worth, right? I'm trying to double my net worth and, and the way I'm going to do it is through the Moomoo app, right? So get down to the description box, click on that if you don't mind, go get your seven free stocks and put yourself in a position where you're ready to build some wealth. Well, let's go ahead and move on, guys. Let's dive on into the Q&A. Looks like we got our first super chat from Mark. And I want to say, first of all, Mark, thank you for kicking us off. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you know more than you know. And uh, send me a DM sometime on Instagram or send me an email, man. And, and, and I appreciate you because I see what you're doing here. And, and man, thank you. Now, let's get to your question. Howdy, do you know about DSCR loans and do you know any reputable loan companies that issue them? So D, uh, DSCR is basically just your, in my opinion, it's more of a, a, a debt service loan, right? So you, you, debt service is basically what you pay the bank for giving you the loan, right? So if I want to borrow $100,000 from the bank, then guess what? The bank is going to say, well, okay, we'll give you this $100,000, Richard. But here's the interest rate, here's your term, here's your monthly payment. So what you got to think about there is, is when you, when you look at the debt service, the debt service is basically what pays the bank back. Now, you got a couple ways that can work, right? The debt service to repay the loan can be you, or the debt service can be the real estate, or whatever asset that you're buying, right? Typically, if I'm buying real estate for income, I want the bank to consider the debt service being met by the property. And how, do, how does the property pay the debt service? Through rental income. So I take the rental income, right? I take the rental income. So you got your debt service ratio. And correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, Mark, but I think that's what you're talking about, DSCR. If not, clarify, but the debt service is what repays the loan. So when I go into a bank and I say, hey, I want to buy this investment property, the bank is going to say, well, okay, show me the lease. Or they're going to say, what is the, what is the um, projected gross rental income? Okay, the, the projected gross rental income is $1,000 a month. So the bank takes that $1,000 a month and they look at the loan and they're going to look at the monthly payment on the loan against what you're getting. And then they're going to determine if that's good enough. Now, normally what banks typically look for is a 1.25 debt service coverage. 1.25. So what that means is for every dollar that you have to pay back to the bank to service the debt, they want to see the property make $1.25. That's a 125 debt service coverage. So for every dollar I got to pay the bank for the loan, the bank wants the property to generate a dollar and 25 cents. So if I got to pay them a dollar, they want the property generating a dollar 25. That's the debt service coverage. It can be 1.50 debt service coverage. It can be 1.75 debt service coverage. Depends on whatever the lender is comfortable with. But that's how you determine the debt service coverage. You look at the you, you look at the you look at the property, the income, minus out the expenses, 
And then that leaves you what? Cash flow. They take that cash flow number and they take that against the debt, the, the, the debt service, which is what the loan amount is. So hopefully that answers your question. And, and what companies make those types of loans? All banks do do loans like that. If I'm if I'm hearing you correct, Mark, all all the all the traditional mainstream banks, even even your secondary lenders, a lot of them use debt service as their primary way to evaluate a loan to see if they can get paid back. Right now, you got asset lenders out there as well, secondary asset lenders who they don't really look at the debt service of the property. They look at the loan to value. Right. They say, well, OK, Richard, hey, we know you got to rehab this property. We know you got to get it ready to go. So we'll make the loan based on what the value of the property is compared to what we will lend you on that. And a lot of times it's 65 percent. It could be 60 percent. So that means if I come in looking for one hundred thousand, the property is worth one hundred thousand dollars and I go to an asset lender, they may say, well, OK, Richard, we'll we'll lend you we'll lend you 60 percent of that hundred. You got to come in with 40. That way, if something happens, we only got 60 percent of our money in this deal and we can sell it, get our money back and go about our business if you don't repay us. So that's more of an asset based lending compared to a cash flow debt service lender. A cash flow debt service lender, they look at the loan to value as well, but that's not how they get repaid. They get repaid from the, the income that's being generated from the property. Whereas sometimes on an asset lender, they're just looking at the loan to value. They're looking at, you know, okay, if it's a hundred thousand dollar property, we'll lend you 60,000, you put in 40. Now, if you don't pay us, we can take this property from you through foreclosure. We only got 60 K in it. It's worth 100. We can sell it for 80. We'll make our money back that way. That's more of an asset lender, more of a cash flow lender. They're looking at the income from the property to repay them. Right. They also look at you because let's face it. If the property doesn't perform, they got to go to somebody to get their money back. So normally in these types of loans, they put you on there as a guarantor. They may put you on there as a co-borrower, depending upon how comfortable they are with the property and the cash flow. So hopefully, uh, Mark, that answers your question. Um, like I said, any mainstream bank will, will, will look at, uh, you know, D DSCR loans, um, in my opinion, uh, so, so hopefully that answered your question. I appreciate the super chat as well. If that did not answer your question, please let me know. Now let's keep moving on. That's a good point. When we're talking about, when we're talking about buying real estate, guys, like I said, the whole point of buying real estate from our perspective as an investor is we're trying to do what? We're trying to get cash flow and we're trying to get appreciation of the property. Those are the two ways we increase our net worth. We increase it through the cash flow and we, we, we increase our net worth through the property appreciating in value while we hold it, right? So when I, was, when I was buying real estate heavily, my goal was to do what? Get those two things, get more of it. I wanted appreciation in my rental income and I wanted appreciation in the property. But I also got some tax benefits as well because I got depreciation. I, I was able to write off certain expenses for the property. And I was a W-2 guy, so that helped me. So the rental properties that I had, let's just say I had rental properties and they had, let's say I had a million dollars worth of rental properties, right? And I could depreciate those rental properties, you know, over a 27 and a half year period. So I could depreciate them a certain percentage for, for the next 27 and a half years. I could take that depreciation. Let's say that depreciation was, was $50,000 a year. I could take that depreciation and apply that against what? My taxable income. So it reduced my taxable income by 50 grand because that was the depreciation. That doesn't mean the property's lost money. It, the, 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 the tax code just says I can depreciate that property over so many years, a residential property. I can depreciate it over so many years. And if I got, you know, if I got five rental properties and they, they're worth, a, you know, they're worth a million bucks. Let's say they're worth a million five and I get $50,000, $75,000 a year in depreciation. I can take that depreciation, which is a non-cash expense, and I can apply that to my 
taxable income, right? It will reduce my taxable income. I'm not a CPA, guys. So double check with your CBA, CPA or your tax advisor to give you more clarification around how you can use real estate and other assets that, that have depreciating value that you can offset some taxes. But that's what I used to do. I used to take the depreciation. I was a W-2 guy, so I had a lot of income over here. I'd take that depreciation every year and boom, reduce my tax liability by whatever the depreciation was. So that worked out really good for me while I owned real estate. So what did I get? I got four things from real estate, right? One, I got rental income. Two, I got appreciation in the property if I bought in a good neighborhood, right? Three, I got, I got really good tax benefits because I got depreciation, right? Which is a non-cash expense but I get to write off that property over the 27 and a half years and just get to write it down and I get to take that and apply it against my taxable income. And then number four, what did I get? I got the mortgage payment, right? The principal on my, the principal on my mortgage was paid down by the rental income. It didn't come out of my pocket. So if I went out and got a $300,000 loan every year, when I was making those payments, part of those payments went to pay the bank their interest, but the other part of the payment went to pay down that $300,000 loan. If I do that over 10 years and, I, and the rental income pays that loan down over 10 years to say 250 k that's another $50,000 in income that I captured through pay down of the rental income that I really don't have to pay taxes on. And again, I'm not your CPA. You go talk to a CPA, a real CPA, to, to figure out what strategies work for you and your rental properties or your, your real estate portfolio. But for mine, man, for, for years when I was a W-2 guy, a W-2 guy, that, that, rental, that, 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 that real estate portfolio really helped reduce my tax liability. It really did. Plus, on top of that, I got, like I said, I got the rental income. I got the appreciation of the property. On top of the depreciation, on top of the mortgage pay down, it was just a fantastic way, guys, to build wealth. So think about real estate investing for income. And I know some of y'all, I know some of y'all are saying, eh, interest rates are too high. I don't want to buy real estate when interest rates are so high. I can't. Listen to me. Hear me out here. Hear me out. Here, here's, here's what I'm, I'm here's my thought on that. The thing you got to understand, guys, is right now where we're at with real estate, we got high interest rates, right? For residential real estate, high interest rates. But we have a supply inventory problem. We don't have much inventory. So we got little demand. We got little inventory. We got high rates. Here's what's going to happen, though. And this is why I'm telling you guys. It ain't a bad time to start making a move on real estate right now because a lot of us think rates are too high, plus we think prices are going to come down. If, if rates are already high, prices are already high, that don't make any sense, right? Typically, when prices come down, when do when you have demand? That's when prices come down. Or prices might come down if interest rates too fast and you got a lot of supply let's just say you got equal demand equal supply but interest rates run up what does it do to the demand goes down demand goes down right if demand goes down and i got a lot of supply what happens to the prices they be down because interest rates are high you know why they're not coming down because we don't have enough inventory now, here's the other flip side. What do you think is going to happen when the Fed finally starts reducing short-term interest rates? What are you going to think is going to happen between supply and demand at that point? We already know we only got a little bit of supply, right? Do you believe when interest rates come down, what does that do? That increases demand. You're going to have more competition. Here's what I'm telling you. If you're looking to buy a rental property, here's your best time to do it now. Why? Because you don't have no, you don't have any competition, guys. 
And now you got these sellers out here who are having seller fatigue. They're ready to sell their properties. So you can go in and negotiate a super good deal. Okay, yeah, for a couple of years, you got to pay the higher interest rate. But here's the deal. I'd rather pay the higher interest rate and get me a better deal on the purchase. Because I can always do what? What can I always do when rates go down? Refinance it. What you don't want to be caught with your pants down is rates come down. It increases demand. You still only got this little limited supply of inventory. It's going to run prices higher. So now all of a sudden you're paying more for the property because you have more competition. As soon as rates come down, demand going to go up, guys. So think about right now. In my opinion, you want to think about buying property now. You can always refinance and get a lower rate, but you can't always get this a better price because prices are going to go up when rates come down and they got to go up because we don't have enough inventory. I'm just telling you. So if you're thinking about real estate, think about that. All y'all out here, oh, we're going to have a crash. Where the crash going to come from, guys? You do know when interest rates go down, it stimulates the economy, right? Economics 101. Interest rates go down. Money becomes cheap to borrow. That's a new money supply comes to the economy. And guess what the economy does? It takes that new money supply and starts doing what? Demand runs up. When demand runs up, if you ain't got supply to meet that demand, prices go up. I'm telling you what's going to happen. As soon as these rates come down, real estate prices are going to go up. Th that's my opinion. We got another super chat in here, so let's take a look and see what we got with the super chat. It's coming from MPR. Appreciate you, MPR, for the super chat. Uh, it says, it says, uh, hey, Mr. Richard. I DM you for a consultation on IG. I appreciate it, man. Definitely, I'll have to check. I'll have to check my uh, my Instagram DMs for your um, your consult. But yeah, I do do those guys. That's another thing that I do do. I do do um, one on one sessions uh, with folks. So if you're interested in doing a one on one, like. Uh, uh, M M P R underscore will he's going to do a one-on-one -on -one session with me you can certainly do that with me all you got to do is go down to the description box you'll see my email for the company rf financial consulting you can email me there or you can follow me on instagram and and dm me just like uh will is going to do which is which is awesome i'll double check that will and, and make sure i i got that appreciate the super chat thank you very much if you got a question here, certainly go ahead and ask it, but I'll, I'll, I'll get, get to you in the end. Uh, when I get a chance today, I'll go back through those and make sure I, I reach out to you. We got another super chat from Mopar. Appreciate you, Mopar, for the super chat. Let's go ahead and answer your question. Once 15% of income is invested in paper assets, would you use any extra income to pay off high interest rate debt or put extra into more paper assets? Good question. Here's where I look at debt, guys. Anything, any interest rate that I have over 5%, over 5%, right? Then I would consider paying that debt off. Now, if I got car loans at 2%, I got a car loan at 3%, got a car loan at 3.5%, I can manage the payment. It ain't killing me. I don't pay that off. But here's the caveat. I have to be fully invested, though. I have to be able to pay myself first by putting in like like Mopar here. He's taking 15 percent of his income and he's investing it. That's perfect. Now, of course, the game plan would be Mopar is to get that up to around 30 percent of my income. I want to get to about 30 percent of my income where I'm just paying myself first by investing in assets. If I can get to 30 percent of my income. Well, I'm putting that in investments and I can do that over the next 10 years. Guys, that's a game changer for you. So what I would be working towards Mopar is making sure I can get myself to 30 percent of my income. Hell, if I can get to 40, I, 
when I was really hammering this thing, guys, I was doing 50% of my income. 50% of my income was going into assets, real estate, stock market. 50% of my income. Now, everybody can't just roll out of bed and do that. I get it. Mopar, that's a good start at 15. But my recommendation is the goal should be get yourself to 30. I would not worry about manageable debt under under 5% interest rate. Now, if I got high interest rate credit card debt, yes, I got to pay that off before I even start investing. Before I jump up from 15% to 30%, got to pay off the high interest rate credit card debt. If I have car loans that have high interest rates, I need to sell that car. I don't, I don't want to, I, I just sell it, right? I'll sell it. I don't need the monthly payment. I just sell it. Even if, it's the, even if the rate is under 5%, guys, if I got a car that's taking up more than 10% of my take-home pay, if it's taking up more than 10, the monthly payment equals more than 10% of what you take home, sell it. Get rid of it. You need to get yourself to 30% of your income invested. So if, so if I'm bringing home, so if I'm bringing home $5,000 a month, let's say I'm bringing home $5,000 a month, but my car loan is $750, $800 a month, too much. You need to be 10%. You be, your, your car loan payment should be no more than $500 a month. And when I say car payment, guys, I'm really talking about insurance, right? I'm talking about your car insurance included in that. You shouldn't be spending no more. Car insurance and, and loan payment should be no more than 10% of your take-home pay. So, so here's the deal, Mopar. You got to take a look at what your, what your, and I know you mentioned here, pay off high interest rate debt. High interest rate debt to me is over 5%. That's high interest rate debt to me. Your definition would be different, guys. But my definition is any debt over 5%, I consider high interest rate debt. Again, I'm not looking to pay off some $40,000 car so I can keep it. No, I sell that. I sell it and buy me something for $7,500, 10 grand that I can pay for and dry that thing until the doors fall off of it. I don't need no 40, 50, 60, 70 thousand dollar car guys if I'm not in the enjoyment stage of wealth. It's a waste of money. You do not need a 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 thousand dollar car and you're in the building stage of wealth. When you get to the enjoyment stage of wealth, then if you want to go ahead and splurge, splurge. But that's valuable dollars you're wasting on an appreciating asset. So if, and I'm not saying that's you, Mopar, I'm just telling you, get yourself from 15% of your income invested in paper assets to 30. That's the goal. Get to 30. And you do that for the next 10 years. You're going to be golden. Golden. I'm telling you guys, if you're making car loan payments that are more than 10% of your take home, then you're, you're, you're in, you're, you're in I, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. If you're out here with 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 thousand dollar cars that you're making these monster payments on, hey, on average, guys, a new car on average across America for a new car, that payment is about $750 a month. On a used car, it's about five and a quarter. Guys, $750? Really? And you're in the building stage of wealth? You're, you're making a $750 a month car payment? So yes, Mopar, I think you're on the right track. Uh, is is awesome. Now let's keep pushing ourselves. Let's keep challenging ourselves from a financial standpoint to get to 30. And if you've got high interest rate credit card debt, pay that off first before you make the step to 30. Pay off that high interest rate credit card debt, right? Pay off that, sell that car. Don't even worry about paying off the car. Just sell it. And if there's a little bit of a shortfall, okay, I, I'm upside down five grand. Give them the five grand. Get rid of that big car payment. Give them the five grand. Get rid of that car payment. And once you get rid of that big car payment, guess what? Now you take yourself to 30% of your income invested. 
That's what you do. Don't worry about being upside down, guys. If you're a little upside down, sell that car, pay the difference, get yourself out of these big car loan payments. I'm telling you, it's a waste of money. It's a appreciating asset. It ain't gonna put no money in your pocket. It only takes money out of your pocket. That's not an asset. Y'all already know, assets put money in your pocket. Liabilities take money out of your pocket. Look at your, your financial makeup. Look at what you're spending your money on and you better ask yourself that question. Is it putting money in my pocket or is it taking money out of my pocket? And if it's taking money out of your pocket, guys, guess what you better do? Sell it. Get rid of it. Or stay where you're at. That's the only way you get the wealth, guys. That's the only way you get to your pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Let's see if we got any more super chats in here before we keep moving through. I got Mark. Okay. Let's see who else we got in here. Okay. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. We talked a little bit about real estate. And I know some of y'all are like, ah, you know, I ain't, I ain't trying to buy no real estate right now. I'm done. Well, okay. Okay. Well, let's talk about this then. Let's talk about paper assets. $1,000 a month. What should you be doing with that $1,000 a month? How should you be investing? Right? I'm not a, a advisor. I'm not any of that. I, I'm not one of these guys going to send an email or two and say, hey, here's my portfolio of all different kinds of stuff. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. Don't send me those emails, guys, because that's not, I don't do that. And no disrespect to anybody, but I don't do that. That's not what I do. I don't get people's, but if you want somebody to do that, go get you a stock market broker. Go get you a licensed investment advisor. They'll be glad to do that for you. That's not what I do. I don't look at people's portfolio and then say, well, you got to change. No, because I'm not an expert. I'm not trying to be an expert. I do three things. Y'all already know what that is. SPLG, FTEC, Magnificent Seven. Bam, that's it. I don't want to know nothing else. I don't want to see nothing else. All I'm telling you is, if you got all of these moving parts, you're just wasting your time. Wasting your time. So $1,000 a month, what do I do with it? Number one, you got to figure out how long you want to invest that $1,000 a month. Oh, I, want it. I, just, I just want to do it for one year. Keep your money in the bank unless it's big boy money. Now, if it's a half a mil, two fifty, hundred thousand, you want to invest for a year or two, that's big boy money. But when we got $1,000 a month, guys, you better be in this thing for 10 years or longer. Or you ain't going to make no money. Keep it in your savings account. Keep it in your money market account. Keep it under your mattress in, in, at home. Keep it in. Don't put it in the market. Big boy money, I get it. Because $1,000 a month, guys, investing it short term ain't going to make you any money. Just keep it in your money market. You got to be willing to commit to the process. If you're going to take $1,000 a month, 10 years is the process, in my opinion. This is just my opinion. You do whatever you feel like you need to do. But my opinion is this. You need to be in the market for 10 years. Grind it. That's last super chat by Mopar. Mopar need to be in the market at least. Mopar said he's doing 15%, so my kudos to him. I think that's brilliant. I love seeing people say, this is my commitment, Richard. This is a real commitment. I'm taking 15% of my take home and it's going in the market. Now, Mopar just need to do that for 10 years. I tell you what, if you do that for 10 years and you put it in the right stuff, and I'm just telling you the right stuff is what I do. You can decide what you believe is the right stuff. But I'm telling you what I believe the right stuff is, is what I've been telling you all along for the last three months, what I'm doing, that's the right stuff in my opinion, right? Now, you get to decide what the right stuff is for you, not me. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. But I love the commitment by Mopar. I love that commitment of 15%. My only caveat, do it for 10 years or longer and you'll change everything in your life. $1,000 a month, guys, can change your life forever if you do it long enough. You take that $1,000 and you put it in something long enough that has a, at least an 8% annualized rate of return, It'll change your life forever. All right, let's go. We got some super chats here. So let me let me get back down here and take a look at these super chats. We did Mopar already. Let's see who else we got in here. Okay, we got Sharif is blessed. I appreciate the super chat, Sharif. 
Let's get to your question. I currently invest 40% of my income into paper assets. I also invest 20 a day in an ETF account for my three-year-old son and have been since he was one year old. I'm a mechanic, so I buy my cars cash. Kudos. Kudos. See, this is what I'm talking about. This is the level of commitment you got to have when you're trying to get to that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. This, Sharif, is committed. 40%, guys. 40%. I'm currently investing 40% of my income. Do you know the impact this person is going to have on their pot of gold at the end of the rainbow if they just do it long? If he commits to that for at least 10 years? Listen, guys, let me tell you something. Even the $20 he's doing in an ETF for his three-year-old son, which I think is so just, that's amazing. See, as, as parents, that's what we should be doing. Not buying them Michael Jordan sneakers. Not buying them uh, Mario Brothers video game. Listen, guys, if you got discretionary after you have made all your investments, after you have secured their college fund at and you still got leftover where you can go ahead and do some niceties for yourself, great. But you don't do niceties and Mario games and all this other crap and you ain't even got no college fund for them. You ain't even got no retirement account, but you out here buying Michael Jordan tennis shoes. You out here buying it, the latest P PS5 or whatever they call it. Oh, golly, I got to get him the latest and greatest. I got to take him to the, to the, to the barbershop or the, to the beauty salon and get his little plaits done and that's 250 all of that crap, guys, it's going to keep you broke. It's not going to teach your children nothing about finances. They're going to be in the same boat you are when they get to your age. I'm just telling you. So, hey, man, Sharif, kudos to you, man. Oh, I, I, it might be, it might be uh, let me see, I can't really see the picture, so I don't want to say man, but whatever you are, kudos to you. Kudos. Because I think this is the blueprint. If, if I could take you and put you on the screen and write blueprint on your t-shirt, that's what I would do. Because you, this, this is what we need to be doing, God. But we need to do it long term now. That's the thing, though, Sharif. You got to do it long term. You got to stretch this thing at least 10 years, man. Or, or woman. I, whatever. I'm sorry. I don't know the gender. But you got to stretch it at least 10 years. But kudos to you. I, I'm so proud of to be able to, to, to see this. This is what we should be doing, people. People. This is what you need to be doing. This person is taking 40% of their income. 40%. Oh, I, only, I, I ain't got nothing left over. How, how can I do that? I ain't got nothing left over. You don't hear? That's how you do it. You just make the decision you're going to do it and you do it. You cut out all the crap and you do it. And he's saving for his son. And he buys all of his cars cash. Come on, man, this, this, this person is going to be wealthy. They're going to be wealthy. I didn't, I didn't hear no excuses in here, why I can't do this, why I can't do that. No excuses, just doing it, right? See, excuses are tools of incompetence that seldom build monuments of nothing. Those who specialize in them are seldom good at anything. Hey, love it, Sharif. Thank you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you chiming in with the Super Chat and giving us this real life Example of people that are actually out here doing what I'm asking you to do. Oh, nobody can do that. No one can do that. No one can do for No, yeah, they are. They're doing it. All right, let's move on to Mike C. Appreciate the super chat, Mike C. But let's get to you. Richard, excellent content. You've helped me with my mindset and actions toward finances. Keep passing on the knowledge. I appreciate that, Mark C. Um, Mike C, I'm sorry. I appreciate that, Mike C, because that's the, that's the mandate here. That's what I do on this channel every day. Y'all know I grind every day. Do I have to grind every day? No. I spent 25 years building wealth, man. I could have just capped it off, put a lid on it and just, you know, go out and do whatever I want to do and don't have to bother with any of this YouTube stuff. I don't have to bother with any of it. But guess what? God blessed me with a skill set. He blessed me with a skill set. And he said, listen, man, go help as many people as you can help. And guess what? I guarantee you, you will help yourself in, in the long run. And that's what I've done. I follow that mandate and I'm passionate about it. 
It's my purpose. When I get up every morning, I look forward to this. I don't get up in the morning and say, oh, golly, I got to do another live stream. Oh, golly, I got to sit here and do another video. I don't do that. I can't wait. I get up in the morning. I got the same routine every single morning. Same routine, guys. I get up. I, 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 I get something positive in my mind. I get that positivity out to the real world through my Facebook page, right? Through my, through my Twitter page. I throw, out a, I, throw out a, I throw out something positive every morning. 365 days a year, I do this. Every morning. And a lot of people think I do it because, oh, you're just trying to get... No, I do it because why? It's put me in the right mindset. See, when I get up in the morning, guys, in order to get my day where I want it to go, because I control that, right? I control my effort and my attitude, right? In order to have my effort and my attitude going in the right direction, I have to read something positive in the morning. Because, see, I've been, I've been asleep all night, dreaming all kind of crazy stuff. Who knows? I got to change that mindset. So when I get up in the morning, I'm like, mm, I don't know what I've been dreaming about, but I don't need that to be my mindset. So, boom, I read something. And then I give it to the world, right? That starts my day. And then, boom, I'm out in the morning, four-mile walk, clearing my head, getting my thoughts together, getting my exercise in, getting my health in. I get back home, eat a little breakfast, and boom, I'm off to the races, and I'm grinding. I call it grinding, but for me, it's passion. So I appreciate you, Mike C. Man, thank you. Thank you for recognizing uh, that, that I've helped reshape your mindset. Because all the real work, you did it, right? I just planted the seed. You did all the real work. I'm just a guy on here planting seeds on fertile ground. I don't know where that fertile ground is. I'm just planting the seeds. Some of them grow, some of them don't. Mike C is one of those seeds I've planted that's growing. And at some point, big old mature oak tree bearing plenty of everything, plenty of shade, plenty of everything. You're going to get there. Appreciate you, Mike C. Thank you, man, for the super chat. Thank you so much. Now, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's talk about, again, what do we want to do with that $1,000? That $1,000 in savings. What do we want to do with it? Well, we want to multiply it. Right? We want to multiply it to get us somewhere. Where is that somewhere? Where, where, do I, where do I want to get to? Where do I want to get to? See, that's the question you got to ask yourself, guys, when you sit down. You got to ask yourself, where do I want to end up? Where do I want to get to? I got this thousand dollars a month. I'm going to be rocking. I'm going to be investing. I got this thousand dollars a month. I'm going to be investing. But 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 I can't just invest it blindly without a plan. I need to know where I want to end up today. Hmm, today my net worth is $50,000. That's my net worth today. But in 10 years, I'd like for my net worth to be a half a million dollars. So over the next 10 years, I got a $450,000 net worth gap. How can I take that $1,000 a month and get to the 500? How can I take the five, how can I take the $1,000 a month and go from a $50,000 net worth to a $500,000 net worth using that thousand. See, the thousand is a beginning, guys. The goal should be just like a couple of my folks here that have, that have gave me super chat questions. They said 15% of my income, Richard, 40% of my income. See, $1,000 for them was the starting point. If you really want to make this thing work, get yourself to 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. Oh, I only make four thousand a month. How can I invest four thousand a month? Make eight. Who's stopping you from making eight thousand a month? Ain't nobody stopping you in this country, but you. That's how you do it. Oh, only make four thousand a month. How can I invest four thousand a month? Easy. Make eight thousand a month. Pretty easy to invest four when you make eight. How do I make eight? Oh no, increase your skill set. Get you some side hustles. Get yourself uncomfortable. See, the problem is we don't want to get uncomfortable. Not in this country. Nobody, we don't want to get uncomfortable. You, 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 do, do you think, let me go back to my, let me go back here. Let me go back here because I'm going to use Sharif. Do you think Sharif 
got uncomfortable financially in order to put 40% of his, his earnings into assets to build wealth? You think, he, you think he got financially uncomfortable a little bit? I would say he did. You think, it's, you think he's getting financially uncomfortable when he also is saving for his son? Future. That's, that's getting a little financial uncomfortable. You think it's getting a little bit financially uncomfortable when you pay cash for your cars? And I'm of the belief it's not some $70,000 BMW he's paying cash for. It's probably a nice little A to B dependable. See, he's a mechanic. It's probably just a nice little A to B. Get me where I need to go reliable. I don't care what the front emblem says. I don't need the front emblem to say BMW. I don't need the front emblem to say Mercedes. I don't need the front emblem to say Range Rover. I don't need the front emblem to say Audi. I don't need the front emblem to say Porsche. They already rich. They already mega wealthy companies. Get your company wealthy. Who's your company? You and your family, your children. That's your company. Why are you making another company wealthy when your company broke? Why? Don't make no sense. Thank you, Sharif, for, for, for breaking that mold. And guess what? Here, here, here's the good news. Y'all talk about generational wealth and, oh, oh we, we want more generational wealth. But yet and still, you ain't teaching your kids nothing about how to build wealth. How you going to get generational wealth when you ain't teaching generational wealth? See, we just talk about crap. Oh, I want generational wealth, but I ain't practicing none of the habits, none of the behaviors, none of the investing principles to get generational wealth, <laughs> but we want generational wealth. Guess what Sharif is doing, though? He's teaching generational wealth. He's teaching that one-year-old, uh, his three-year-old, he's teaching that three-year-old how to be fiscally responsible what God has given him. See, y'all missed that point. God gives you, but you got to be fiscally responsible for what he gives you. If you want him to give you more. You raggedy with money, but you want God to bless you with more money. Why would he? You've not demonstrated that you are thankful for it. You've not demonstrated that you are seeking his blessing to pour more Assets on top of the assets you have because you're a bad steward of what he's already given you. All I'm telling you guys is get your financial house in order. Sharif, let me go back down here. Mopar, Sharif and Mopar, they are on the right path. At some point, these folks are going to get to that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow and that thing going to be full of gold. A lot of y'all going to get to your pot at the end of the rainbow and it's going to have butterflies in it. That's it. Ain't going to be no gold because you did nothing in the front end. You did nothing in the front end to have anything in the back end. If you want something in the back end, you better do something in the front end. Let's keep moving. We got a couple more super chats in here. So let's go ahead and get to them. Let's get to them. Appreciate you again, Mike C. Appreciate you, appreciate you, appreciate you. We got Jay HVAC. Appreciate you, Jay. I appreciate you rocking with the channel. I appreciate your super chat. Thank you so much. I'm blessed to be a part of a great community like this. I'm blessed to be a part of folks that will, 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 will recognize that I'm a part of their financial team. I, I, I appreciate you recognizing that I'm a part of your financial team, JHVAC. I appreciate that. And, and I'm going to be a good steward. I'm going to be a good teammate. I'm going to be a good teammate for you. Keep me on the team. I'm going to be a good teammate. I promise to you, I'm going to be a reliable teammate. When you need me, I'm going to be here. So I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Mario Clark. Appreciate you. Again, appreciate you allowing me to be on the team. Because you get to pick your team. And you have chosen to allow me to be on your team. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. I will not let you down. I will be here every day. 
dropping these financial nuggets. If you need me, email me. If you need me, DM me. I'm going to get back at you. I appreciate you allowing me on the team. Thank you so much for the super chat. Let's keep moving on. Let's keep moving on. Mopar. Got another one from Mopar. I have a vintage car collection that two, two times the value, 15 years. Should I sell part of them and convert to paper assets to take advantage of incoming bull market or keep them to appreciate in value to diversify? Great question. I got cars over here that are appreciating assets. They're not generating any income yet. Again, like I've told you guys with dead assets, real estate that you live in, car collections, art collections, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You got to try to determine. See, the thing which you got to understand about dead assets, guys, is that I really don't know what the value will be in those dead assets down the road in 10 years. I, I really don't know. I don't know. I don't know what my car collection or that I have, I don't know what it will be worth. I don't know what the running costs to keep that car collection and it's not generating any income for me. Now, yes, if I hit it right and all, all the stars line up, I can see all the planets perfectly 10 years from now, could it be worth something when I sell it? It could, but there's a chance it couldn't. So I'm of the belief, this is the kind of guy I am, I, I, I like the bird in the hand instead of two in the bush. I like the bird that I got in my hand than the two in the bush that I might be able to get later on down the road. So here's my thing. I personally, and again, I'm not saying you have to do this Mopar, but you asked me my opinion, so I got to personalize it because I got to look at it at me if I was in that situation. If I was in that situation, I, 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 if I believe I got the value now, I would sell them. I would sell them, I would take my cash, and I would roll it into something else that actually generates income right now. That's also going to grow in value, but it's going to generate income. So the question has to be, well, okay, Richard, if I, if I believe I can get a 25% return on my money in 10 years on these cars, can I get a 25% return on my money short term, you know, right now, investing in the stock market and paper assets? Great question. I think both of them, you take a risk. You take a risk. You take a risk 10 years from now, those cars may not be worth what you think they're going to worth. See, the thing I hate about things like that is it's sort of like crypto. It's sort of like crypto, right? Those cars sit there and... They may or may not be where I think. See, I always think my, my, my dead asset is worth more than what it really is worth. I'm going to always tell you, yeah, my house is worth 1.5. But guess what? It don't matter what I think it's worth. It's mat what matters is what someone will pay me for this. And if nobody won't pay me 1.5, I can put on paper what I think it's worth. See, I don't have to worry about that when I go to paper assets. I know what it's worth. I know what it's worth. I know what it's trading at. I know the S&P did 20% ROI last year. I know the S&P did 10% return for the first 90 days of 24. I know this. This ain't no, oh, somebody might pay me that. No, it's done it. I don't know what somebody gonna pay me for them cars 10 years from now. Especially if we all electric. Yeah, it may have some value, but you, you, your value is determined by what that, that one special person will pay you for it. So you ain't got to worry about that over in the stock market. Long as I got Apple, long as I got NVIDIA, long as I got Walmart, long as I got CVS, long as I got Exxon Oil, long as, all the big boys, I don't have to worry about any of this one guy over here giving me something for something. Uh-uh. I'm going to put my money over here where I know regardless this is what I'm going to do. So my question to you is, what are you trying to get accomplished? At the end of the day, what do these cars mean to you? Why are you holding on to them? I mean, are these dream cars that you're going to keep for the rest of your life and you're going to at some point enjoy them? 
Are they really investments that you're just holding on to like crypto? I don't know. You got to answer that question. I've told you personally what I would do if I was in that situation. I'd get rid of them suckers so fast. I'd just get rid of them. I would. I'd get rid of them, take the money and put it in something real like real estate for income, paper assets, a business that I, I get to control, not what some guy might pay me 10 years from now. I was down at the, uh, just a quick little sidebar. I was down at the local, one of my local supercar dealers yesterday. I, I, I stopped in just to, they had, a, they had an R8, an Audi R8 that I like, that I wanted to check on, but they had already sold it. So I'm, I'm running through there and they got a, they got a, a Ferrari Pista, a Ferrari 488 Pista. Guys, go to the $1 trillion research lab. You can look at that. It, my perfect spec, triple black, triple black, carbon everywhere. Not, not even, not even, not even a thousand miles on the odometer. It's a 2020 cream puff. I asked the guy, I said, well, you know, how much is it? Like 575. I said, well, will it hold its value? He said, you know, they've been holding their value pretty good. The problem with an invest, that's not an investment. See, if I buy that, I can't buy it and say, you know something, man, these guys say this thing hold this value. It's a collectible. I'm going to hold this thing. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. If I buy it, I just buy it for personal enjoyment and it is worth what it's worth when I move on from it in a couple of years. See, I'm not going to buy it thinking, okay, I'm gonna, I got this Ferrari 488 Pista. It's a rare spec. I'm going to sit it in the garage and put a cover over it and just air condition and make sure it's perfect. So, Five years from now, maybe I can sell it for six fifty. That's just a bad way to do business, man, because I don't know in five years what's going to happen to the value of pieces. I just don't know. I'd rather take that money right now and put it in what? NVIDIA. I painted the picture for y'all yesterday what NVIDIA has done. If y'all haven't seen that video from yesterday, where I talked about NVIDIA and, and the history and, 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 and where it's going, Guys, you got to go watch that video because it's, it's killer. I'd rather take that money and put it in the video. I just don't think the money that you got in these cars and you think you're going to get will come close to what you're going to get in the market over the next 10 years. I just don't believe it will. But that's my personal opinion. You got to make that decision. But I've given you my opinion as you've asked me for. And I hope that answers your question for you. Me personally, guys. Unless it's a super duper 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 one of one, very rare, can't get it, big boy type stuff, I don't buy it for investment. Now, that's one thing you got you, you, you were fortunate enough to get on Ferrari's list and you bought a, a, a Ferrari, La Ferrari from the factory. You know, you the only owner, it ain't but 900 in the world. You got one of them? And it done went from a million dollars and it's worth right now. You, you can't get one for to like four million. That's different. But if you just got a regular car and it's a, you, 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 you believe it's a, a vintage car and you believe it's going to be all that you believe, you believe, you believe stuff. Mm -mm. Take that money and put it in something that you ain't got to be the expert. You ain't got to believe you. The expert is all it's already done it. So that's my recommendation to you, Mopar. Let's keep moving. But appreciate the super chat as well. Thank you so much. I think I got another one in here, another couple more in here. Let me see here. Yeah, I do, I do, I do, I do. Organized gaming, appreciate you. I appreciate you rocking with me. Appreciate you trusting me with your mindset. I appreciate you, you trusting me with your mindset and, and hopefully we getting it right. And, and, and by what you've done here on the Super Chat, it seems as though allowing me to be a part of your team is, is changing that mindset. So. I'm doing my job. I'm going to keep doing it. Stay plugged in. Stay tapped in. Keep rocking with me. I'm going to get you where you need to get. Now, of course, you do the work, but I'm going to provide the information to make it a little bit easier to do the work. You see what I'm saying? So it's team. Teamwork, right? Teamwork makes the dream work. Teamwork makes the dream work. That's all I can tell you. Teamwork makes the dream work. Organized gaming. Appreciate the game. No doubt, no doubt. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. So this notion of this thousand dollars a month, guys, we're back on that, right? Thousand dollars a month. Let's say I do that thousand dollars a month for the next ten years. I get an eight percent return. What do I have? 
I got a couple hundred thousand dollars in my pot of gold at the end of the rainbow fund. I got a couple hundred thousand dollars, just taking a thousand dollars a month. Let's say I took two, 8% rate of return. I got almost $400,000. Let's take, let's say I take three. I got almost 600,000. Let's say I take four. I got almost 800,000. I take five a month for the next 10 years. 8% rate of return. I'm a millionaire. Well, Richard, how do I do 5,000 a month? Go out and earn it. How does anybody do it? How, how, how does someone in the chat do 40% of their income? How does someone in the chat do 15%? Of their, they make a decision. They make more money. They keep more money. They invest more money. That's how you do it. There is no secret sauce, guys. I keep, I, for some reason, we think there's something somebody else know that we don't know. No, if you go out and survey a thousand self-made millionaires, they'll tell you the same thing. It'll be almost identical. They had to give up something, right? They had to give up something in the front end, right? They had to give up something in the front end. They had to discipline themselves. They had to be consistent at whatever they do. And they had to be patient. They had to put a good team around them, right? You got to put a good team. That's why I tell y'all your gang of five is so important. That's your team. Hopefully, I'm a part of that gang of five and I'm on the team. Ultimately, I'm the captain of my team. I'm the most valuable player on my team. Everybody else on my team supports me being the most valuable player. I pick the team. The team is, I'm in the center. Everybody else around me, the team, helps me become the best I can be. Those are the people you need to be picking. You around here hanging with people who you the most successful one? I don't know. You tell me. If I'm not where I want to be and I'm hanging around a group of people who I'm the most successful and I'm not where I want to be, I don't know. I don't know. You got to figure that one out. But personally, my gang of five are going to be people who are where I want to be. That's going to be my gang of five. It's going to be people who I look at and say, you know something? I like that. That's what I need. I need more of that in my life. That's how you build your gang of five. Your gang of five shouldn't be a bunch of people that you are more successful than. That, that's my opinion. You, you, you figure that out. But, but you got to put a gang of five together. That's going to make you a better who you are. That's the way I look at it. I'm a big believer in birds of a feather flock together. You hanging around four people that ain't where they want to be and they negative Nancy's. You're going to be the fifth negative Nancy. I'm just telling you, get your get your get your team, put a team around you. Put a team around you. Just telling you. Put a team around you. Hopefully I'm on the team. Hopefully you've included me as part of the gang of five and I'm on the team. But if I'm on the team, you got to be plugged in. I'm not helpful if you ain't plugged in. I'm not helpful, guys, unless you're plugged in. You got to be plugged in daily. You think this financial thing is a, a part-time job? No, this is a full-time deal. If you want to get to your pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, you better plug in and, 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 and understand this is a full-time deal. I'm full-time plugged in for 10 years, and at the end of that 10 years, I'm going to raise my head up, look what my net worth is, see if I'm where I need to be. If I am, I'm done. If I'm not, put my head back down, keep running until I get there. I may need to add five more years to it. Who knows? I don't know. At 26 years old, I put my head down and said, I ain't lifting it back up till I get to 50. And that's what I did. That's what I did. For 24 years, I just did what I needed to do. I put myself around the right people. Right? And, and, I, and I soaked in that information. All my wealthy clients that I had in banking, I learned something from all of them. I learned something from all of them. Every client that I've had, that were successful, I learned something and I applied that. I tweaked it, but I applied it to my financial life. 
That's it. One of, one of my best friends in the whole world, Deion Sanders, I learned he's in my gang of five. But I don't, I don't learn money moves from him. What I learned from him is that tenacious attitude that I'm going to be the best that I can be at all costs. That is what I get from him. I get from, I get from him when I'm feeling sorry for myself because I didn't hit some goal I go back and listen to him when he says, man, you may not be on the leaderboard. You, you, you may not be where you want to be. But you're still in the game. You're still in the game. Keep grinding. That's what I get from him. So you got to find a gang of five that you can draw inspiration from. Not just financial knowledge, but inspiration. Motivation, because sometimes we don't motivate ourselves. Sometimes we need a, a, a little kick to get that motivation we need to get over the hump. Gang of five going to help you with that. I'm telling you guys, get you a gang of five. If you don't do nothing else, get you a gang of five. All right, let's see. We got some more Super Chats here, so let's get to them. Let's get to them. Tahir Jones, appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. Appreciate the Super Chat. Is 17K in a Roth IRA and 20K in an individual portfolio a solid start for a 21-year-old still in college? On, on a street, 1K a month in Roth, IRA, five months. Let me see here. He's 21 years old. He got 17K in a Roth. He got 20K an individual portfolio. Started from 21 years old, still in college. All I can tell you, Ty, here is kudos, man. Kudos. You got grown-ass people out here. Ain't got that. You're a college student. Just, just getting into adulthood. And you already got 37K multiplying itself at 20 something years old, 21, 22, 23, whatever you are. Now, here's what I'm going to challenge you to do. Level it, level it, keep leveling it. Here's what I want you to do. Max out the Roth IRA, max it out every year. Now for you, if you make, if you, I assume you're under the income limitations, but check with the CPA I think it's seven thousand dollars or seventy three hundred or something like that a year. Max it every year for the next twenty years. Just, just, just say until I'm forty years old, I'm gonna put my head up. But for, for the next twenty years, max it. Max that Roth IRA for the next twenty years. That's the game plan. Max it. Second game plan. If you get your own business or you're employed by someone and they offer. They offer a 401k, which is a pre-tax retirement account. Post-tax is your Roth. If you work for somebody or if you start your own company, set up a 401k. Now, if you work for somebody and they offer a match, let's say you work with some company, big boy company, they offer a really nice match. Let's say you put 6% in, they give you 6%. Put the 6% in. Put whatever they give you up to the match. That's free money. Right. That's free money. Now you got the Roth. Now you got the, the 401k and you already got the taxable. Then what you do is you take the taxable brokerage account and that's where you will overfund everything else. And here's another thing. Don't get fancy. Don't get fancy. Don't get fancy. You only need about three investments. And I don't know what you're in now, but it seems like you're doing well. But my recommendation, don't get fancy. Don't swing for the fence. Don't try to hit home runs. Keep hitting singles. Keep hitting doubles. Occasional triple. And at the end is where you hit the home run because you're going to be at financial freedom. That's the home run. Right? So all I'm telling you is always have you a broad-based stock market ETF in there that tracks the S&P. That's number one recommendation that I would recommend. Always have a broad-based stock market ETF as the basis of all of this investing, right? Whether it be in the, the Roth, 
whether it be in the 401k or, or, or whether it be in your taxable. Always have that base, broader stock market ETF, S&P 500 as the base. Personally, that's where 50% of my money goes. Doesn't have to be for you. I'm just giving you what I do because I like to tell you guys what I'm doing. Second thing, I would go find me some industry specific sectors or ETFs. Me personally, I like the tech sector. So I take 30% of my money and I put it in, a, in something like an information technology ETF because I think the tech, you already know what the Magnificent Seven is doing. The tech market, guys, is when you look at the most valuable companies in the world, they're tech companies. Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA. Those are three of your, I think those are three of the top five companies in the world, those three. What, what they be? Tech companies. What they be? Magnificent Seven. Just saying. So if I'm going to invest in something outside of the broader stock market, I need to be where, the, where the, the, the wealthiest companies in the world are, which is in the tech industry, if you didn't know that. So I think you're on the right track, Ty, here. All I want you to do and think about is delayed gratification and keep ratcheting that thing up. Keep Every time you get paid, ratchet it up. What you want to get to is I want to get to 50% of my income going into these three buckets. Roth, 401k, taxable. I want 50% of my income. And if you do that from now to 40, you're done. You're a multimillionaire and you're done. That's what my opinion. So kudos to you, man. Keep me on the team. Let me be a part of this process with you. Keep me on the team. Keep me on the team. Let me be a part of this process. That's why I do this is for guys like you and gals like you who already young and aggressive and ready to get this thing done. No excuses. Oh, oh none of that. All we, all we concentrate on is solutions. We don't care about no problems. We want the solution. You're a solution guy or gal. Solution. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. All right, let's move on to our next super chat. Let's see what we got here. We got Carrie Robinson. Thank you for the super chat. So, so gracious of you. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. You have helped me make better financial choices. See, that's what it's all about for me. I'm about people first. Thank you, Carrie. I appreciate you allowing me to be on your team. I appreciate you allowing me to, to, to come into your mindset to take up space in your mindset because there's so many other competing things out here in this world that you could allow space in your filter system, but you allow me space and I appreciate that. Thank you for rocking with me. Uh, my pleasure, dropping some nuggets, some financial breadcrumbs that you're starting to follow. And my goal for you, just like I hope your goal is for you, get to that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Let, let's get you there. Let's get you there. Only thing I'm going to ask you to do is stay tapped in. Stay tapped in and execute. That's all you got to do. You ain't got to be no expert. You ain't got to know everything. Don't, don't fall into that trap. Don't fall in that. Oh, I got to be the expert. Oh, I got to know everything. Oh, I uh. don't fall in that trap. That's a trap. That's a 1% trap. They trap us like that. So we don't invest and build no wealth because they want us dependent on them for the rest of our lives. As long as they can keep us dependent on them for the rest of our lives, they got us. You got to understand that, guys. If they can keep us dependent upon them financially for the rest of our lives, they got us. The only way you break out of that is, is you got to depend on you and your assets, not them, you. And Carrie, you're on your way. So keep doing what you're doing. Keep rocking with me. Stay plugged in. And again, get over there on that Instagram page. Follow me or, or email me and let me know how you're doing. I appreciate the super chat. We got another super chat from Tahir. I got positions in Chinese stock, 4.3K in Alibaba. And following after that, I have concentrated positions in Apple, Alphabet, and PayPal. 
Only thing I would tell you to do, in my opinion, I ain't got no problem with Alibaba, right? I ain't got no problem with Alibaba. What I would probably end up doing is, is I would introduce an ETF or two in that mix because what I don't want you to be too concentrated in just individual stocks. Remember, we don't want to try to be the expert. Now, I, I, I'm not saying you're going to miss on Apple. I don't think you miss on Apple. I don't think you miss on Alphabet. I don't think you miss on PayPal. I don't think you miss on Alibaba. But for me to, to, to reduce the opportunity for, 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 for these four companies to control all of my, my financial freedom aspirations, I, that's not going to work for me. I need to spread that out. I need to go over and get me a broad-based stock market ETF, S&P 500. Now I got the top 500 companies in America, and that's where I hang my hat. And then I go get these individual stocks in a lesser, you know, lesser part of the portfolio. Maybe I do 80% up here, and I leave 20% for these individual stocks. I don't want to be out here trying to be the expert. I, I, I want to be a passive investor and I want to have something proven. Now, I ain't got nothing wrong with your individual choices, but I would introduce a broad-based stock market ETF in there like the S&P. That would be my recommendation to you, Ty, here. And then I would, at, at worst case, I would do 50% of my income in that ETF, 50% in these stocks. At best case, I would do 80% in the ETF, 20% in the stocks. But that's just me because I'm a more conservative guy. I don't want to be the expert. I don't want all my eggs in one basket. And I know some of you say, well, well, you're 100% in equities. It's all in one basket. Well, Ty here is trying to get to the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And he don't want to be 100 years old before he get there. So, yeah, he's, he's going for growth. Ain't got nothing wrong with that. Ain't got nothing wrong with the companies he's chosen for growth. I just think he needs more. I just think he needs more. I think he should be in every sector, every industry. And the broader base stock market gives you every sector, every industry. Right now, he's concentrated in a couple industries. He needs to be in all 11 industries. That's what the S&P 500 gives you. Plus, it gives you the Magnificent Seven. Because I don't see NVIDIA in his little, in, in, in your markup here, which in my opinion, you're missing the big boy right there. If you go back and look at my video from yesterday and go pull up that article that I shared with the folks that was on the live stream yesterday, you, you put the video on the short list. And that's the only thing I don't see. I don't see NVIDIA on the short list. NVIDIA should be on the list. It should be. So that's my opinion. You do what you got to do. It's your pot of gold at the end of the rainbow effort. I'm just here to be on the team and, and give you nuggets. At the end of the day, you choose, you pick. All right, just got another super chat from I-M-P-L-I-X-T. Appreciate you. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of the team. I appreciate you giving me the super chat. Thank you so much. That was very nice of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So here we go, guys. We're, we're, we're still on this notion of how do I take the $1,000 a month and take this $1,000 a month and grow it? How do I do that? Number one, I need a brokerage account. Right. For those of you that don't have brokerage accounts, I need a brokerage account. Right. And like I said, I, I use Moomoo. Down in the description box, you'll see a link for Moomoo. That, that, that basically is telling you they're going to give you seven free stocks when you put one hundred dollars in your brokerage account, just as a thank you for trying their brokerage app. Now, those seven stocks, if, if, if you read through, are, are not just your regular smugglers. It's not regular smugglers. It's the magnificent seven. Apple. Microsoft, Meta, Alphabet, Amazon, Tesla, Nvidia. They're going to give you all they're going to give you seven of the magnificent seven fractional share stocks for just opening up your new Moomoo Moo brokerage account. So if you're interested in that offer guys and you're interested in rocking with me, doing what I'm doing, copying my plan, get down in the description box and click on that Moomoo Moo link. Now, how do we do, once we open the movement, what do we do with $1,000? Let me tell you what I do with my $1,000. I take my $1,000 and I take $500 of it and I put it in an S&P 500 ETF like SPLG. So I take my $1,000. Once I open my Moomoo account, I put my $1,000 in there because that's what we're dealing with. We got $1,000 in savings. We're starting to build wealth. 
Well, I take my thousand, I put it in the Moomoo account. The first thing I do is I get my seven magnificent seven fractional shares. They put that in my brokerage account. Now I got the magnificent seven. I'm rolling. Whatever those fractional shares are, whatever it's worth, I don't care. I got the magnificent seven in there. So boom, I got that. Then I take the thousand, I take 500 of it, and I put it in an SPLG S&P 500 ETF. S&P 500 ETF. That's what I do with the 500, 50% of it. Oh, do I do that one time, Richard? No, I do that every month. Every month I put $1,000 and I take 500 and I put it in SPLG or some other S&P 500 ETF that tracks the S&P 500. So every month, for how long, Richard? 10 years. Every month I dump the 1,000 in, take 500, put it in an S&P 500 ETF. Well, what else do you do? Okay, now I take $300 of the 1,000. I take $300 and I go find me a tech ETF. Why? Because three of the top five wealthiest companies in the world are tech companies in the United States. Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA. That's why. That's why. Apple almost has a $3 billion market cap. N NVIDIA has a 1.8. I'm sorry, let me back up. Apple has a three, almost a $3 trillion market cap. Not billion, trillion, right? Like 2.875 trillion. NVIDIA has almost a $2 trillion market cap. 1.87 to be exact. Somebody tell me what Microsoft is in the chat. I can't remember off the top of my head what Microsoft's market cap is, but it's a big boy. So I go take 30% of my $1,000, which is $300, and I dump it into a information technology ETF, something along the lines of FTEC. Everything I'm telling you guys, I'm not gonna spoon feed you and put it on the screen and, oh, can you put a nice picture of it on the screen? So I no, get your pen and piece of paper and write it down. I'm part of the team. You the captain. You the captain of the team. I'm just, I'm, I'm just part of the team. I'm a role player on the team. I'm, a, I'm coming off the bench. You the superstar. You write it down. Get your little phone out and make your note. F oh, he said FTEC. I got to look that up later. Oh, he said SPLG. Let me write that down. I got to look that up later. I'm not here to spoon feed you. No, 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 no. I ain't here for that. I'm here to drop information and you got to feed yourself. I'm just here to bring the, inf the food. I'm bringing the food, giving it to you, but you got to feed yourself, right? Go to the $1 trillion research lab with those two ETFs and figure out what they are, right? So 50% or $500 of my thousand goes into SPLG, broader based stock market ETF, tracking the S&P. $300 goes into FTEC, which is a information technology ETF. Why? Why do I like the tech sector? I just told you. Four of the top, I mean, three of the top five companies in the world, market value wise, market cap wise, are in the tech space. That's why, right? Tech is the future. You do know what's coming. You, you got to know what's coming. So, so three hundred dollars goes up. How, how often do you do that, Richard? Every month, every year for ten years. Every month, every year for 10 years. What do you do with the last 20% or $200? Magnificent seven. Fractional shares. That's what I do. That's every month. Every year for 10 years. I believe I double my net worth doing that based on what history tells me. That's what I do with my $1,000. And that's what I'm asking you guys to consider to, to take that thousand dollars, put it in that Moo Moo account, and then every single month you do something with it. I just gave you my blueprint. Now, if you want the full video, then send me an email and I'll send you the full wealth transfer blueprint video that outlines those three investments that I just told you. Gives you more detail on it. I can send you that video. Also, I can send you a video that will walk you through the Moo Moo app, show you how to use it basics, give you the basics.
So if you want that video, send me an email. Richard, open my Moomoo account, funded it. Send me those two videos. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to get rolling here. Boom, you got it. So let's check on our super chats and then we're going to keep moving, guys. Keep moving. Keep moving. I think I got a couple more here. Chat for real. 10K in the video tomorrow. Fractional or whole shares? Do whole and then roll the rest of it into fractional. Me tomorrow, 50K in the video. I told the guys in the chat that yesterday. I'm taking 50K and putting it in the video tomorrow. And I'm going to forget about it for 10 years. Guys, if you, haven't, if you have not seen that video I did yesterday where I talked about the video, the, the, the live stream from yesterday, you, you got to go check it out, man. You got to go check it out. I'm telling you guys. The video is going to do something that's um, it's insane. It's going to be insane, guys. If you, if, let me just give you a little sneak peek. If you had put $20,000 in the video in 2014, it'd be worth $3.4 million today, 10 years later. Here's the scary part. They're projected to do the same thing in the next 10 years. That's what the projections are. So, so, so if I'd have put $20,000 in the video in 2014, I'm not talking about 1914, 2014, not 1914, 100 years, no, 10 years. In 2014, if you'd have put $20,000 in the video, it would be worth $3.4 million today. Their revenues from 2016 to 2024 went from $5 billion to $60 billion. There's a $305 billion revenue bucket for the AI chips over these next eight years. They're saying NVIDIA already has 92% market share. So if you take 80% of 305, can you imagine what their revenue is going to go from 60 billion to this in the next eight years? It's crazy. Go look at that video, guys. I'm telling you, it's crazy. I'm not your financial advisor. I'm just a guy telling you the moves I'm making. And obviously, chat for real, he must have watched that video yesterday because if he finished, he going in hot. 10K in the video tomorrow. He going in hot. I'm going in hotter. And I'm telling him, buy whole and then the rest of it go fractional. I don't care what it's trading at. Oh, it's trading at $900. It's going to crash at some point. Okay, so what? I got 10 years. That's a, that's a risk I'm willing to take. See, you got to understand this investment thing, guys, is not something that's... Um, Guarantee. All of this could blow up in our face. But what's my option? Somebody tell me what my option is if I don't do that. My only option is Social Security. And you do know they're trying to push the age back to Social Security to like 69. Do know that, right? They're going to do it. I promise you they're going to do it. They're going to push that age back, but they got no choice. They're running out of money. They're running out of money. They got to push it back. So if that's my alternative, I'm thinking, shoot, I take my chance with the stock market. I look at the 100 year history of the stock market. I take my chance there. And I take my chance with NVIDIA. Based on everything I know, I'm going to take my chance with NVIDIA. And it looks like Chad for real, he, he getting ready to put his in a big way too. Chad, I, I'm with you, man. I, I, hey, I'm with you. All I can tell you is just have a have a long term outlook. Me, oh, it's up fifteen. It, it's up to hundred. It's up to fifteen hundred dollars a share. You gonna cash in? Nope. Mm -mm. I ain't cashing in for ten years. I'm waiting on two or three splits. I want the Chipotle split. <laughs> yeah, all right, you're joking. I'm trying to get the Chipotle split, boy. If I get that Chipotle split, ooh, goodness gracious, boy, you talking about Caribbean Ocean and a big old patch of land and a big old, ooh, I'm going to own the whole island. If I get that Chipotle split on the video 
and I hold that thing for 10 years and we get that Chipotle split. Ooh, goodness gracious. I'm on me a whole island in the Caribbean Ocean. It's going to be Richard Fane Island. That's the name of it. Richard Fane Island. And y'all welcome when I get it. If I get that Chipotle split on the video, that 50 to 1. <laughs> Sit on the sideline if you want to. Go right ahead. Chad, I'm with you. I'm with you, brother. I'm with you. I need that Chipotle split. <laughs> Boy, if I get that Chipotle. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. Let me, let me, let me, let me stop. Let me stop, because I will, I'll go off on the deep end. Trust me. I will go over the deep end. So let me let me get over that. Let me get back to these super chats. <laughs> Y'all do know Chipotle for the split 50 to 1, right? I'm just saying. Okay, let's keep going. Let's see. Uh, what we got? We got uh, I, I am P-L-I-X-T. Appreciate the super chat. It says, same as Ty here, 21-year-old, 14K, Rolf, 20K individual advice on investing in real estate. In the near future, I have 20K down, also save emergency fund. Ooh, I tell you what, boy, y'all are killing this thing in the chat today, man. Boy, y'all, I, I, I don't, look, I would love to say I'm a small part of that. I hope I am. But y'all killing it in here today. Y'all got these young folk in here killing it. Y'all old folk need to be ashamed if y'all letting these young folk kill like they're killing Y'all right here complaining, oh, I'm 50, I'm 60. Well, I can't do it. These young folks killing it. Listen here, man. Here's the deal. Number one, and I'm sorry I can't pronounce your name. I-M-P-L-L-X-T. -I -I here's the situation. Kudos on the Roth. Kudos on the individual 20K in individual advice on investing in real estate. Kudos on the Roth. Kudos on the individual. Only thing on the Roth, just like I told Ty here, only thing on the Roth, max it. Max it now. You do 20 years of maxing that thing, man. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me. I digress, but give me a second, guys. I, I got to do this for, for, for my guy. I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do this for him. I just want him to know the power. This for you as well, Ty here. This is for Ty here and, 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 and T. I'm just going to call you T because I don't, I, that other stuff in front of you, I, I don't know what that is. So I'm going to call you T. Here it is, guys. Here it is. This is the power I'm trying to tell you now. Listen here. Listen here, Ty here and T. You max that Roth for 20 years. You're going to have $350,000 in that Roth. And guess what? Tax-free. So when you're 59 and a half, tax-free. And then what you're going to do is, is when, you, when you get it there, just let it ride. Because you won't be 59 and a half. You'll, be, you'll, you'll still be a young person. Let's say you're 45, or 40, 42, whatever. Let that thing ride and keep compounding. Let it ride and keep compounding. Here's the thing. Not just 20 years. Let's say, let's say, you, let's say you are... Let's say you're 25 and you can't touch this money till you're 60, right? That's 35 years, right? I ain't wrong in that, right? That's 35 years maxing that Roth. At 25 years, if you start, you already done started, but just stick in there. Max it for 25 years, guys. Max it. You got 1.3 million in your Roth, tax-free. 1.3 million, tie here, 1.3 million T. That's why I'm telling you, max that thing until you're 60. I know it's a long time, but trust me on this. At an 8% rate of return, you max this thing over the next 35 years, you're at 1.3 million. If you get a 10% return over that time period, oh, you will never get that. S&P done done that, guys. It done already done it. You got over $2 million in your Roth. Come on, guys, $7,300 a year for the next 35 years. $7,300 a year for the next 35 years. Ty here and T, because y'all are two young guys that stepped up. I'm, I'm thinking you guys. I'm hoping, whatever, you know what I'm saying? I'm, 
I'm calling you guys. Y'all know I use that sort of interchangeable. You got $2 million just in the Roth, not even in anything else you're doing, not in the taxable, not in your real estate portfolio. That's just the Roth. You will have $2 million in the Roth. I don't care if it's 7,000, 7,300, it doesn't matter. Who cares? One of the two, right? Who cares? All right, all right, all right, okay, okay. Let, let's go back and recalculate because we got, we got somebody in here. It ain't 73, it's seven. Okay, let's do seven. How about that? We don't want to mislead nobody. 1.9 million, okay. You still got 1.9 million. So $7,000 a year, but what, what they ain't telling you is when you get to be my age, 50 and older, you get to add an additional thousand. And they keep increasing it every couple of years. So you're going to have more than the two million in there. You're going to have more. My only regret, not my only regret, but one of my regrets, one of my regrets is I didn't start at, at Tahir's age or, or, or T's age. Don't you know, if I would have known the information I know right now, when I was 21, 18, I'd have probably 20, $25 million right now. I ain't going to lie to you. I had about $25 million. If I would have started that. So, so, so that's my game plan for you. Make sure you max out that Roth and do it until you're 59 and a half, 60. And you're going to have a couple million dollars. That's for both of y'all. Just get that seven grand, come hell or high water, put that seven grand in that Roth every year till you're, till you're 60. And you're going to have $2 million in the Roth or more just in the Roth. And it's all tax free. You never pay taxes on it. That's all you got to do. All right. Let's move on to the next part of your question. Then we're going to move on. Advice. Okay. On real estate investing. As I started the beginning of the chat, and I know maybe you wasn't here. I said at the beginning of the chat, when it comes to real estate investing, I'm not talking about buying a piece of real estate and I'm going to live in it and it's my dream house. And oh, you, no, I'm not talking about that kind of real estate. I would not buy real estate for that purpose. Not now. No. But for investment purpose, where well, you're going to put a tenant in that sucker. Now is the right time, in my opinion. And here's my rationale. Rates are high, but prices are still high. What do you think going to happen to prices when rates come down? If they're high today and rates are high when you got less competition, less demand and rate and prices are still high. What do you think going to happen when price, when rates come down to real estate prices? What do you think going to happen? Anybody in the chat chime in? Prices are high now. Rates are high. Rates come down. What are you going to think is going to happen to demand and to competition? It's going to go up. It's going to go up. Rates are high today. Prices are high today. Rates come down, introduces more competition, more demand. We already got a limited supply of, of, of inventory. What do you think is going to happen to that in prices? It's going to go up, guys. Them rates mess around and come down to 5% and we don't increase the inventory. Price is going up. So here's what I've been telling my, my real estate investor people. Start looking now. See, what you got to understand is these, these sellers that are on the market right now, they've been on the market for a while. How do you know that, Richard? I'm one of them. I've been trying to sell one of my properties. Been on the market for 120 days. Got a little bit of landlord fatigue. Got a little bit of seller fatigue. Right deal come along. I'm getting out of that thing. Long as it's reasonable, it ain't got to be the purchase price. It ain't got to be the asking price. I'm ready to get out of this thing. You think I'm the only one? Uh-uh. There's plenty of them out there. That's why I'm telling you, for guys and gals who are already bankable, down payment money, verifiable source of income, good credit, and you're looking for rental properties, I don't know why you would wait for rates to come down. The price is going to go up. <laughs> Y'all better learn something about how this economy works, man. Y'all better learn something about supply and demand. You better get yourself over there to the, the $1 trillion research lab and, and learn about supply versus demand. I'm telling you, rates are already up and prices are up. What do you think going to happen to prices when rates come down and more demand enters the market? 
more competition enters the market. Them prices going up, man. Especially if it's a good piece of real estate, they're going up. So my point is here, T, look now. Go get you a really good real estate agent that has a expertise in real estate investing. Don't just go get no regular smeggler. Go get you one that has proven experience in bird dogging real estate properties, one to four family residences for rental. Go get you one of them who has a proven track record. Tell that person what you're trying to get accomplished. Now, your part you got to do to be ready, you need to go get pre-approved. Go to your local credit union. Go to your local community bank. See what you can get qualified for. Get you a pre-approval in hand. So when you go to that landlord or when you go to that seller, I'm already approved, bro. I'm ready to roll. I just need you to come down on the price. They're going to come down on the price. But you got to go in ready. You got to go in pre-approved up. You got to go in knowing exactly what you're trying to get accomplished. Go get it right now. I would not wait for rates to come down because I'm telling you prices are going to go up when rates come down. Why? It just supply versus demand. There's no way we're going to have enough inventory to match demand if rates go down to 5% at some point over the next year and a half. If rates go down to 5%, guys, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, prices are going to go up. We're just not going to have enough supply to meet the demand. You know how many people out here want to buy a home? They want to get into a home and the only thing they're waiting on is rates to come down. That's the only thing. Why? Because if rates come down by 2%, now their what? Their monthly payment budget increases. It increases. Most people don't care about the price. What they care about is the interest rate and the down payment money, right? So my point is, is, is jump on that thing, man. Jump on that thing. Jump on that thing. But I told you what my recommendation would, what I would do. So hopefully that helps, uh, T. Mario Clark, thank you, Richard, for encouraging. Thank you. Appreciate the super chat. Appreciate you allowing me to be on the team and rocking with me. King Z, appreciate the super chat. Good day, Richard. Are there silver and gold ETFs? Absolutely. Absolutely there are. Now, I don't know what they are because I don't invest in gold and silver ETFs, but they're out there. My recommendation, go to the $1 trillion research lab, type in top gold and silver ETFs. And you're going to get trillion dollar research lab, AKA Google is going to give you a list of them. And then all you got to do is, is, is go take a look at them and see which ones make sense to you. What am I looking for, Richard? Well, you're looking for three things. When you're buying ETFs that track any sector or track any index or track any, well, the sector would be the gold and silver sector, right? So here are the three things you want to look for, in my opinion, King Z. First thing you want to look at is performance, right? Let's say I pull three ETFs that are specific to the gold and silver sector. I want to look at the performance of those three ETFs compared to the sector. Compared to whatever the sector is doing, I want to look at those ETFs to see how they compare to that sector from a performance standpoint. And all that information is found right on Google. It's right, I mean, each ETF you pull up, you can go look at the historical performance of that ETF right on the website of the company that started the ETF. So you wanna look at performance and you wanna make sure that performance is equal to or greater than what? The sector it's tracking. If the sector says, well, you know, gold and silver over the last 10 years has increased 25%. I'm just hypothetical here, guys. Increase 25%. That's what the sector did. Now I go look at the individual ETFs and one of them says the performance was 20%, but the sector did 25. That's a problem. At least to me, that's a problem. So that's the first thing I look at is performance against the sector. I take the ETF and I match it against what the sector did. If the sector is XYZ, you better be XYZ. Second thing I look at is expense ratio. The second thing I look at is expense ratio. What are they going to charge me in order to have my money in this fund? That's called the expense ratio. The lower the expense ratio is, the cheaper it is for you to get in and, and, and the less they charge you. The more the expense ratio, the more they charge you to have your money in the fund. 
So that's the second thing I look at. If I'm looking at three ETFs, I look at each one of them and see what they're charging me from an expense ratio. Where is that found? Right inside of the ETF company that, who, who, who started the ETF. All that information is right there, guys. It's public information if you just look for it. Third thing, I want to look at what? History, longevity. How long has it been around? If I'm looking at an ETF that was just created in 2024 and they got like three months worth of, <laughs> that ain't my ETF. I want my ETF to have, you know, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, some longevity where I can go look at the five-year rate of return, the 10-year rate of return, the 15-year rate of return, perhaps the 20-year rate of return. I want to look at all of that. That's going to tell me something. That's going to tell me something about this fund in the history. I also want to look at what's under management in that fund. Right? I want to look at how much money is under management. If I got one like VOO that got five close to what I think is it VGT? VGT has 500 billion under management. So when I looked at VGT against FTEC, FTEC has way less than that. I had to say to myself, okay, Richard, you got a you got a behemoth who has a proven track record behemoth. Now the price is way more than FT, FTEC, but how do you feel about that? I was okay with it not having as much money under management because it had a longer, it had a long track record. It had been around for a while. The key there was it wasn't as popular as VU. Why is VU so popular? Why is VGT so popular? Because of Vanguard. See, Vanguard is the pioneer of all this stuff, this passive investment stuff. They go way back 70 years doing this stuff. So they're more popular. They've been around longer, but that doesn't mean they outperform what I'm in now. So you got to look at those things. You ain't got to be an expert to do that, guys. All that information is right there. You just go look. So those are the three things I would tell you to go look for uh, King Z when you're trying to look for your gold and silver, gold and silver ETFs. Just find out. Go to Google. Ask for the top five gold and silver ETFs. Google will give you that. And then all you got to do is, is look at all five of them or all three of them, the top three if you want it, and then go look for that information. Performance, expense ratio, and history. Longevity. How long has it been around? And then look for what's under management. And then kind of look for inside of that ETF, what are the companies that they got in there? Or does the ETF own the gold and silver? Right? Because technically, if, if you, you can buy an ETF where the ETF owns the gold and silver. Maybe you own a share in the ETF. You don't physically own it. The, the, the fund does, but you own a share in the fund. So all those things kind of mix into it. So hopefully that answers your question. And again, I'm not your financial advisor. I'm no expert here, guys. This is just basic blocking and tackling. And this is what I try to cover for you guys on this channel is just basic blocking and tackling. This is not me trying to run the ring T offense or draft a first round quarter but no i'm just blocking and tackling just basic information you don't got to be no expert to do this now if you want to go hire you an expert to do it fine but you don't have to be you take those three pieces of information i gave you you're gucci i'm just telling you you're gucci let's keep going so we got another super chat from old miss mafia Ooh, what a name old miss mafia okay real talk talk your sh boss we love you man thank you uh, old Miss Mafia, appreciate the super chat. I appreciate you having me on your team and allowing me to rock with you. And I appreciate you rocking with me. So thank you very much for the super chat. We got another super chat from Mopar. Uh, thank you, Mopar, again for the blessing. I appreciate it. Let's get to your question. Let's see what we got here because we got a, some more super chats. Let me see. I just messed up that one. Let me let me let me, let me keep rolling. Uh oh, there we go. Half of my collection are super rare, limited, numbered, documented cars. Bought undervalued 15 years ago during down market. I plan to sell that. I plan to sell half that isn't rare. I will be joining you tomorrow in NVDA. Appreciate it. Love the strategy. And, and again, you know Mopar ain't got no problem with the strategy. My job here. Is, is to give you my, 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 my perspective. I think you got a good game plan. It looks like you know what you're doing. 
my only thing was in the beginning was don't hold on too long and the market turn upside down on you. That's all I'm saying. And it looks like you got the right game plan. So I'm with you 100 percent. You're doing everything you need to do to spread out and diversify the portfolio so you don't have all your eggs in one basket. I'm OK with that. I think you know what you're doing. You're not a novice at this. So do your thing. And uh, welcome to the team on the video, man. We're going to kill this thing. Now, we gonna, I'm going to be in this thing for 10 years, but, but we're going to kill it. So welcome to the team on this NVIDIA, this NVIDIA thing. We're going we gonna to be rolling with tomorrow, man. We're going to kill this thing. We're going to kill this thing. All right. We got Mario Clark. Appreciate the super chat, Mario. Thank you. 50% of my income in the market. Ooh. Awesome, man. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. As long as you got that 10 year, 15 year window, I love it. Or, or whatever your window is, that, that's up to you. My window is 10 years, but you, you, you got your own window. I just love you're in the market. See, I love when people are in the market and not trying to time the market. He's just in the market every single day, 365, you're in the market, not trying to time it. I love that. So good job on that one. Let's move on. Mario, again, I do have a Roth and 401k, even better. Right. Even better. See, we see, guys, let me tell you a little secret. This Roth IRA thing, please take advantage of that. If, if you if, now I got some income limitations associated with it. But, so talk to a CPA and find out. But but if you if you're under the income limitations, I'm not sure why more people don't do Roth IRAs. You guys got to understand you, this is this is money you've already been taxed on. But it grows tax free. Remember that 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 I, I just a couple minutes ago gave you that scenario for T and for uh, Ty here, two young young fellas or, or, or young people, right? And guess what? If they do that, seven thousand dollars, guys, for the next thirty five years. And I know some of y'all, oh, he ain't got thirty five years. Listen, get over it. Get over it. You're young. If you're young enough and you can do it for the thirty five years, do it. So what? You got to do it from 25 to 60. So what? It ain't all of your money. It's just $7,000. Just put it in there until you're 60. You're going to have $2 million in there. If you put it in the right thing, S&P 500, broad-based stock market ETF, you're going to have $2 million. Who at 25 years old can't just, can't just delay gratification on seven grand for 35 years? Who can't do that? Do it. Now, if you get in a, a you're stuck between a rock and a hard place, anytime in that 35 years, you get stuck between a rock and a hard place, guess what? You can go to that Roth IRA. You can take out the principal that you put in for free. No problem. No penalties, no nothing. The only thing you can't touch is the growth. So, 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 so I'm 25 years old and for 15 years, I'm putting my 7K in. I get to 40 years old, I hit a bump in the road. I hit a financial bump in the road. I need 50 grand. I can go to my Roth IRA and take my 50 grand that I put in already that I've already paid taxes on. There's no penalty for that. I can go take 50 grand because I've already put 50 grand in that they've taxed me for already. That's why it's called a post-tax retirement account. I've already been put, taxed on the money that I put in. What I can't touch without getting a penalty is the growth. So it's still sort of like a quasi emergency fund if you need it. We don't want to use it for that, but, but you can get at the principle that you put in without getting any penalties. So keep that in mind. But if I'm a young person, even if I'm a middle-aged person, I started doing my Roth at, I want to say, shoot, I had to be close to 40 and right now mine is doing great. I put $8,000 a year in it because I'm over 50 years old. So I get to put $8,000 a year in that thing and I'm gonna do it till I'm, I don't know, till they stop me from doing it. I don't know what the guidelines on how long you can put it in, <laughs> but until I reach that guideline, I'm gonna put that eight grand in every year because who knows, what if I live till I'm 80? What if I live till I'm 85? And, and, and Lord's will, I will if I'm healthy. You know how big that thing gonna be? You know how big that Roth IRA is going to be when I'm like, and, and you know something? 
as long as they allow me to put it in, I'm going to put it in. And guess what? It passes on to my kids when I'm, I leave this place. That's really why I'm doing it. I don't never really plan on touching it. Honestly. So, so you don't have to be very young to do it. It, it helps if you start younger because you just it, it's so massive. By the time you're 60, it'd be so massive. But if you start at 40, 45, whatever, it's still tax-free growth. Jump on it. Talk to your CPA and, and, and jump on it. Talk to your CPA and jump on it. We got another super chat from Basil Champ. Basil, appreciate you rocking with me. I, I know you've been rocking with me for a minute, so thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of the team. Let's get to your super chat question. What do you think about an ETF that tracks the international stock market? I don't think it, nothing. Again, what did I say? Pass through those three gates, right? I don't care what ETF it is, guys, whatever you like. Me, I'm not an international stock guy. I'm a United States guy. I ain't investing in no company that ain't United States born out of the United States. Now, they may have international offices. They may manufacture stuff in China, but they're still a United States company. They dumb us out here. That's all I invest in. I ain't got nothing wrong with international stocks. They just need to pass through those three gates. Performance, expense ratio, history. And how much money do they got under management? Pass through those four gates. I don't care what ETF it is. I don't care what index fund it is. It has to pass through those four gates. And then I make a decision on it. Personally, I'm not an international stock guy. I know nothing about the international uh, companies. So I ain't gonna put my money in nothing I don't know anything about. Me, I know about the S&P 500. All big boy, all blue chip, all American. That's all I care about. That's what I invest in. But for you, Basil, if you like international and you wanna throw that in as a diversification tool so that you ain't all 100% concentrated in US companies, I get, I get it, nothing wrong with that, just not my thing but it still passed through those four gates. Still take it through the four gates. If it, if it meets the criteria and it passes the four gates and you want to diversify a little bit, knock yourself out. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't mad at you. Ain't nothing wrong with that. So that's where we're at, guys. We are at a situation where we got to think about taking this money. We got to think about investing this money and we got to think about doing it long term. I've walked you through a lot and I appreciate all the super chats and all of the, 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 the questions that I answer via the super chats. And that's what we want to do every Sunday, guys. We want to be able to ask questions and get answers from me based on my experience. I'm not here to try to be some guru. I'm not here to know everything, be everything, do everything. I'm not here for that. I'm here to give you my 25 years of experience as a commercial and, re a commercial and retail banker. And I'm also here to give you my 25 years of experience as a residential real estate investor for income and my experience building side hustles, building businesses, investing in the stock market for over 20 plus years on my own, all self-directed, investing in nothing but big boy blue chip. So all this notion of, oh, American companies are trash. That's crap. They're not. Not from my perspective. They made me a lot of money a lot of net worth, a lot. So I don't know where that notion came from, but boy, I already told you, four, matter of fact, three of the top five value companies in the world sit right here in the United States. When you look at Apple and Microsoft, Apple and Microsoft, when you look at their cap, right? When you look at their, their, their cap value, it, it's bigger than the UK, um, who else, uh, Saudi Arabia. Um, it, was, it was some big company. Just those two companies, when you look at their market cap, their value, it's bigger than all of, you, all of the UK companies put together. All of the companies in Saudi Arabia put together can't equal just those two companies. Their market cap can't even read. I'm talking about every company in the UK, guys. You take every company in the UK, put them all together. Market cap, 
they don't even beat Microsoft and Apple. Let alone you throw NVIDIA in there, it's off, it's off the charts. The only countries out there that will beat that, I'm talking about big boy countries, when you put all of their companies together, China, Japan, those are two of them that will beat them when you put all their companies together. But all these other little countries running around here, pfft, just those two U.S. companies alone, well, you, you, you stack up every company in the U.K., market cap is higher. Every company in Saudi Arabia, market cap is higher from our two companies. So for me, come on, man, that's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. I keep telling y'all, this ain't rocket science. It's a no-brainer. 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 Okay, let's get to the rest of these super chats. We got one from Kiefer. Appreciate the super chat, Kiefer. Let's get to your question. Hey, boss. If I have 100K in an S&P ETF, should I be selling 75 a year and put in a Roth as it is taxable event now? Here's what you do. Go get your CPA. This is what I recommend. See, I, 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 I don't recommend us taking advice like that for that type of complicated situation from people on YouTube. I, I, don't, I don't believe in it. I don't believe in people giving you know, me for me to sit up here and tell you it, what I can't do that. Here's my recommendation, though. I would sit down with my CPA and I would say, hey, here's what I want to do. And I know a lot of people call it like a backdoor Roth IRA, all that. I, I can't advise you on that because that's, that's outside of the scope of what I do. When I have questions like that, I just go to my CPA. Hey, Van, here's the situation. This is what I'm trying to get accomplished. How can I do this? And I lean on an expert a proven track record expert to give me that advice. I can't give you advice on that. So I, 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 I love the thought though, and I know the road you're going down and I certainly would do it if I'm able to, I'm with you. I'm with you because, of the, so here's the thing. You pay a little bit of tax right now, but you get that money over, the gain you're gonna get long-term is gonna way surpass the little taxes you paid on it. And you do that like once a year or, or so. so Again, I'm not going to get into all of that. Go talk to your CPA, but I'm with you. I'm 100% rocking with you. If you can make that work, do it. But don't listen to none of these people in the, in the, in the chat or, or, or any of these people in, 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 in the comments. Go talk to your CPA that you can sit down with and walk through your situation and make sure these people get you on the right path. That's what I would do. That's my recommendation to you, Kiefer. But appreciate the super chat and I appreciate the question. Let's move on to Eduardo. Thank you, Eduardo, for the super chat. I appreciate it. Seeking advice. Upside down on my truck, about 10K, but currently using it for Uber XL, and it's my only income. Hmm. That's a good one, Eduardo. Upside down 10K. Now, here's what I would be asking. If you're driving for Uber... Let me ask you, is it an asset or is it a liability? And here's where I'm going. Does it put money in your pocket or does it take money out of your pocket? See, the way I look at assets, see, assets put money in my pocket. I might be upside down on an asset, but if it's putting more money in my pocket than it's taking out of my pocket, then it's an asset and I just, I just ride it till the wheels fall off of it as long as it's producing income sufficient enough to cover the payment, to cover my expenses, and put money in my pocket. I don't pay it off, I don't do anything, I just keep driving it to, 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 to I put 500,000 miles on it, all Uber miles. And at some point, when I look at the revenue it generated, that little $10,000 being upside down is gonna be insignificant. Now, on the flip side, if you say, no, it, it's really taking money out of my pocket. Every month it's costing me more to own this car than I'm making on Uber. Then at that point, yeah, I'd get rid of it some kind of way. I'd do something. Or I got to increase the revenue on the car. I got to take on more Uber days or Uber hours. Or maybe I have some Uber days and I have some DoorDash days. Maybe I start also getting me a little side business where I'm delivering packages to people. 
But for whatever I do with that car, I'm going to drive it into the ground. 500,000 miles of something to make money. That's what I would do. So you, you got to figure out which, which side of that coin you land on. I wouldn't worry about it being upside down. And if it's generating enough income to satisfy everything, I wouldn't worry about it. Who cares? I'm going to drive it 500,000 miles. I'm going to drive it till the doors fall off of it. So as long as my income supersedes my expenses on the car, I'm Gucci. What am I worried about that for? I ain't going to worry about it. I'm going to keep making money. I'm going to do everything I can for 500,000 miles until the engine fall out of it. That way, when I look back on this situation, I'm going to say, well, okay, shoot, I made I made $250,000. Yeah, I was $10,000 upside down. But I drove this thing for five years and put 500,000 miles on it and made me 200,000. I'm okay. That's what you got to do. Don't worry about being upside down, guys, if it's making money and the money that it's making is paying all the bills. Don't worry about that. Only time you need to worry about that if it's upside down and it ain't making no income, then I do everything I can in my power to get rid of it. So hopefully that answers your question, Eduardo. That's my take on it. That's my take. So hopefully that, like I said, it answers your question. Uh, let's get the rest of these super chats. Uh, Mario Clark. Hey, Richard, what you think of SMCI stock? I don't even know what that is, but I'm going to look it up on the trillion dollar research lab. I have no idea what that is. I keep telling y'all, y'all be asking me stuff like this, man. I don't know about all these stocks. Y'all know what I know about because that's what I talk about. If I knew anything about it, I'd be talking about it. I, I don't know anything about any of these stocks because I'm, guys, you got to understand, I'm not a stock picker. I'm not a stock picker. I don't spend my time researching other stocks and, and, and going down. I don't, I don't. I'm sorry. I don't. I just buy what I buy and the rest of it, I don't, I don't care about. Super Mario. Okay. Super, super Micro Computer Inc. Okay. I got you. Yeah. I done seen some. Yeah. Yeah. This one I've been hearing about. I've been hearing about this. No, don't get me wrong now. I haven't done a deep dive, but let's see what it's doing year to day. Whoo, goodness gracious. That thing killing it. What the heck? Ooh, maybe I do need to learn that. Appreciate that, Mario. May I put this on the list? God, doubt. This thing killing it. Ooh, shoot, NVIDIA. You might have a little, a little buddy here. Let's see what this thing did five years. Oh my lord, the five year on this thing is insanity. This can't be right. These people got the five year return on this thing 4,215%. The five year guys. Oh my goodness. Ooh. They got this thing since 10,445% return. Yeah, I'm I'm put that on the list. Uh uh, Mario, appreciate you. Let me screenshot this thing. Oh boy, I got to put this on the list. I don't know what's going on, but I'm going to find out. I'm going to get me some of the back end, I guess. Probably can't get in on the front end, but I'm going to get in on the back end if it's worth it. I'm going to do me a little homework on this one. Woo, Mario, let me tell you, brother. <laughs> that thing a monster. <laughs> That's a monster right there, boy. I don't know the whole backdrop. But the little bit of information I just looked at on the, the one trillion dollar research lab. <laughs> Boy, I might have to put me a little something, something in that. Woo, I ain't mad at you, Mario. I ain't mad at you, brother. I ain't mad at you. Thumbs up on that there. That's a thumbs up. That thing had 10,000% rate of return. Woo, good Lord. I got to do just a teeny weeny bit of deep, deep, deep diving. But boy, that might be on the list for tomorrow. Ooh, goodness gracious. This afternoon, I got to do a little deep dive. I ain't going to go 50 on it, but I might go 10. <laughs> Boy, I might go 10. Ooh, Lord. Ooh, and you, you, here's the crazy thing, Mario. This thing ain't even, but this thing ain't even exploded yet. This whole AI thing, it ain't even exploded yet. I already told y'all. They're saying over the next, I think they said the next, oh, I know what they said, 2030. They said from right now to 2030, the AI chips industry is going to generate $305 billion.
This SMCI, I don't know where they fit in that, but I'm going to find out. I already know where NVIDIA fits. If this company fits nicely in there right along with NVIDIA, woo! Mm -mm -mm. I'm, I'm on it. Thank you, Mario. Appreciate you, man. See, I learned from you guys, too. See, I learned from... See, 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 I ain't like that. I don't be out here. I don't know about a lot of these. And boom, I just learned something. Guess what? I'm finna do a little deep dive and don't put me some money in there if it's right. Thank you, Mario. Appreciate you, man. Woo! God, dog. Iron sharpen iron, Mario. Appreciate you, man. Iron sharpen iron. Thank you. Appreciate you. Let's keep rocking. Moss. Thank you for the super chat. Appreciate you. If I have 12K in my Roth, started seven months ago, should I take out 6K and drop it on NVIDIA and continue to contribute to my Roth? Why would no? Just you, you, so, so you've already, so you got 12K and you started it seven months ago? How you got 12K in it and you started it seven months ago? I mean, you know there's some limitations on how much you can put in there. Now, maybe you got some something I don't know. If you're under 50, I think you only get to put $7,000 in the thing, but maybe you're over 50. Maybe, I, I don't know. Whatever, however you got it in there, good for you. But my thing is, um, I would just go in my Roth and whatever I got invested in that Roth, inside of the Roth, you can sell it and then just rebuy NVIDIA if you want. Yeah, you see, you got the Roth IRA, guys, is just a is just a shell. But you got investments inside of that Roth IRA. Those investments, just like me, with my Roth IRA, if I decided, okay, I want to take fifty thousand dollars of my Roth and cash out X Y Z, and then I, I go ahead and and, and buy, um, I want to go ahead and buy um, Nvidia. Because what happens is when you, when you do it, it'll just roll into like the cash account, right? Until you actually withdraw it. It'll just roll in. I, I do it with, my, I do it with my, my other accounts, right? My, my bigger accounts. I do that all the time over on Vanguard with my bigger rollover accounts. I buy something. I stayed like I did with VGT. I stayed in VGT three years. I sold it and I rolled it into the money market account. I don't get taxed on that because I didn't actually take the money out of the, of the account. So I think, and again, I'm not your CPA. I'm no expert here, guys. I think if you got 12K in the Roth, you can take some of the 12K that's already in the Roth and buy NVIDIA. And maybe that's what you're asking me. If I have 12K in the Roth started seven months ago, should I take six and drop on NVIDIA and continue contributing to the Roth? That's up to you, man. I don't know what you got in the Roth right now. I don't know what that the makeup is. I don't know what, what's invested in it, but any listen, man, I'm a I'm a NVIDIA guy. So I can't argue with that strategy. I, I can't. I can't. If I if I didn't have the wherewithal to just go drop what I'm gonna drop on the video and all I had was what was in my brokerage accounts now, I probably would liquidate some of it. I'm not liquidated, but I would probably sell something and rebuy the video. I probably would if I didn't have extra cash. I got extra cash, so I don't have to disrupt anything I got. I just go take some of my reserve cash and just go ahead and buy, right? So my thing is, it's hard to beat NVIDIA, man. I believe in the next 10 years, NVIDIA is going to be a, a monster, I think. So if it was me, and again, this is just me, guys. I can't, I can't, I'm not giving you advice here. If it was me, if it was me, and I could take some money and diversify a little bit and put it in the video and then just keep on contributing, that's what I probably would do. But, but, but that's me. You got to look at your situation, Moss, and figure that out for yourself. But uh, talk with your CPA, talk with your person that actually set up the, the, the Roth for you. But I ain't mad at you if you did that. I think the video is a winner, but that's just my opinion. I think it's a winner, though. Eduardo. Thank you for the super chat. Only issue is my APR is 21, bought in hot market. Ooh, goodness gracious, Lord. Whew. Woo, I ain't know that. 21% mm. interest rate? Whoo, whoo, that's a monster right there. I didn't, I didn't know that. I gotta get a drink of water off of that one. Mm. 
Well, back to my same point, Eduardo. Here's the, here's the deal. Is it still putting money in your pocket? When you, when, you, when you do, when you look at the revenue from the car compared to the expense, is there a net profit? I don't care what the APR is. I don't, I don't care if you're upside down. The, the question becomes, is it generating enough revenue to, to pay for itself and put money in my pocket? That's the question you got to answer. I don't care what the APR is. I don't care if you're upside down. See, the thing is, guys, if it's generating enough money to pay for everything, none of that matters. The, 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 the APR and, and, and the upside down comes in if it's not generating income to pay for itself. That's when it matters. That's when I got to get rid of it. But if it's generating enough money for me to actually pay for it and put money in my pocket. Now, again, you might have to do a little more hustling. I often say on this channel, sometimes we got to, for a short period of time, we got to work 20 hours a day, sleep four. I may have to drive Uber more hours than I want to. I may have to pick up a DoorDash route. I may have to pick up a package delivery route on my own where I put an ad on Facebook or on Craigslist and I... I may have to. Now, if I'm not willing to do all of that, then yeah, sell it, get out of it, do the best you can. But if I'm making money on it, I don't care what the APR is. I don't care what the upside down is. If it's making money sufficient enough to pay for the expenses. So hopefully that helped, man. 21 APR is a, is a monster, but that's only a monster if I'm someone that's just driving around and ain't making no money off the car. If I'm making money off the car, I don't care what the APR is. I don't care if I'm upside. I don't care if I'm $50,000 upside down if it's making money. When I look at my revenue versus the expenses and I've got a net profit and that net profit is healthy, what do I care? I don't. I don't. I just drive that thing to, to I can't drive it no more. I don't care if I put 500,000 miles on it. At some point, I'm a win because I'm going to have more revenue than the expenses. Right. You think people don't do that all the time? Yes. Companies do that all the time. They don't care. Companies will take assets and run them into the ground. They don't care. I, I, I done made loans for people for, for, for heavy equipment, uh, uh, rolling stock, uh, real estate. Doesn't matter. As long as they're making enough income to cover it, it's generating enough income. They're fine. The name of the game is, is it making income and is it more than the expense associated with the asset? If it is, I'm okay with it. If it's not, then you got to come up with, with a different strategy. I'm now I'm a, on an exit strategy. I'm trying to sell this thing. Mario Clark, thank you for the super chat. Appreciate you, man. I had to tell you that. Oh, thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you for telling me that, man. That, that's, that's a monster right there, boy. I don't know. Woo! I, woo, I got to... Whew, I, maybe I do need to ask you guys periodically on here. Give me some tips. <laughs> Woo, because that boy that right there was a tip and a half. I'm telling you, I'm going to jump all over that thing tomorrow. I promise you. I'm all over that thing tomorrow. I'm all over it tonight researching it. And, and my research, guys, is just a trillion dollar research lab. And, and you know, oh, I'm going to look at the analyst reports. I'm not doing all that. I'm going to go look at the, million, uh, the, the trillion dollar research lab. See what people saying about it online. See what that history is. And I'm in. I don't care if it's 948 a share. I don't care. If it's doing those numbers. And if I can get that thing to. If I can get that thing to. If, I, if we can get that thing to, to Chipotle split. I'm good. If I, can, if I can get in before the Chipotle split. I'm good. I just need a Chipotle split on NVIDIA. And this MC. M S M C I. If I get a Chipotle split on them two with a good little chunk of money and then ride that thing back up for 10 years, ooh boy. I'm gonna get me a big island in the Caribbean. I'm gonna own the island. Like I said, I'm 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 be the I'm gonna own the island. I'm gonna be the only joke on the island. Only joke on the island. No cars. Only way you get there by boat. 
Only way you get around on the island in golf carts. You're going to have no cars on my island. If I hit a home run with these two, oh, goodness gracious, boy, I got to get that one. I got to get it. Appreciate you, Mario. Appreciate you. Again, guys, we're getting ready to wrap this thing up. So if we got any more Super Chats, this will be the time to do it. I think I'd have been on this thing about two and a half hours, which it don't seem like that because we've just been asking questions and, 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 and interacting. But, but what a good Sunday morning for me. I get to spend it with you guys talking about building wealth, answering questions. Matter of fact, I learned something today, so that's great. I'm very, very enthusiastic about these young people that's popping in here talking about Roth IRA. They're talking about traditional brokerage accounts. They talk about real estate investing. These young folks, I'm super stoked about that. And then for you guys that have been rocking with me for a while, I'm just good to hear that y'all are starting to take a good portion of this income that y'all are making and throwing that thing into investments. I'm so happy to, to, to know I got people out here that looking out for me and saying, hey, Richard, I know this ain't your thing, but rock with this, man. Go check this out. Go, you, you might want to rock with this. Appreciate that, Mario. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate that because I'm, I'm definitely going to rock with that. Definitely going to rock with it. So uh, we looks like we got a couple more Super Chats and then we're going to get out of here, um, wind this thing up. But before we get to the rest of these Super Chats, remember, guys, link down in the description box for uh, Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. Give me a follow, but use the link down in the description box. Give me a follow on Instagram. More good stuff coming on Instagram. Uh, plus, it's a really, really easy way for you to, to DM me, DM me and, and get a private conversation with me. Also, I just want to remind you guys, website coming out next week, hopefully. By the end of next week, we're going to have the Richard Fane Millionaire Mentor website. It's going to be up and ready to go with, with, with digital products. We're going to have, a, we're going to have a, a mentorship program that we're going to roll out on there. It, it's going to be great. So keep your eyes and ears open for that new website. Uh, it's coming out. Uh, also, I want to make sure you guys understand what I'm rocking with, which is Weeble and Moo Moo. I, I got both of them. Both of them are down in the description box. Moo Moo is my primary. Weeble is my secondary. Both of them are down in the description box. If you want to try out both of them, feel free to. They're both giving you free stocks. You're both, you can use both. I got four brokerage accounts that I use. Um, Vanguard, Merrill Lynch, Moo Moo, and Weeble. But Moo Moo is my primary. So that's the first one in the link down in the description box. They're going to give you seven free stocks. They're going to be magnificent seven fractional shares. So if you want the Magnificent Seven, y'all have heard me talk about that a hundred times. If you want the Magnificent Seven in your brokerage portfolio, go down and click on that Moomoo Moo link, open up that Moomoo Moo account, put $100 in there, boom, you're in, right? You're in. If you want a second brokerage account and you haven't opened one, you got the Weeble link down there too. They're giving you free stuff as well. Go check out them as well. Use the link down below. Now let's get to these last few and then we're going to get out of here. And let y'all go on with your, your rest of your Sunday. Let's see what we got here. We got a couple more Super Chats and then we out. Let's see. Um, Eduardo, what do you think about BIDU stock, a.k.a. Baba? I don't know nothing about them either. Let me, let me just look them up real quick on the, on the Trillion Dollar Research Lab. And um, let's see. B I D U. Never heard of them, but let's check them out. Uh, what, what, what type of company are they? What do they do? No, 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 no. They ain't going to do it for me. They ain't going to do it for me. They ain't going to do it for me. Because when I put in a five-year return, they got a negative 38, 48%. Uh-uh. That, that ain't going to do it. Yeah, no, I can't rock with them now. That, that might be right for you, but even their one year is a negative 2339. No, 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 no. Too, too, too much, too, too much. Ain't enough, ain't enough jump off the page at me on that one. I need some jump off the page at me if I'm going to get excited about it. That, that, that didn't jump off the page. They got a lot of red over there. Not a high stock price, but I don't know much about the company, but it ain't my thing. They, they didn't, it, 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 it scared me. It didn't excite me. I got scared when I looked at it. I didn't get excited. So I'm sorry, uh, Eduardo, on that one. I, 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 when I looked at that SM, whatever the one Mario sent me, when I looked at that thing, that thing, that thing almost, 
that thing kissed me. Boop, right there on the cheek. I, it, this one here, it tried to hit me. It tried to swing at me. I, I can't do anything with that one. So, but you can, ain't my cup of tea. So let's move on. Let's see what else we got here. And then we out of here. Hey, I appreciate that positive lifestyle. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate the congratulations on the website. It's going to be dope. I, you guys know you got to get over there and check it out once I get that thing up and running. And I, I hope to have it. My daughter's working on the last little touches. I got to send her some stuff this afternoon. Once I send her a little bit of stuff, she's going to go ahead and lock that thing up. It ain't going to be, you know, we're gonna, it's a working website. So we're going to be tweaking it, changing it. Once I get some suggestions from you guys, I'm sure once you get in there, you'll say, hey, Richard, what about this? Hey, why not add this? How about this? And that'll continue to evolve the website. But for right now, what we're going to have on there, I think is pretty cool, right? We're going to have some, 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 some digital products that's going to actually, you know, teach you, right? In depth. Not my strong suit where I want to go all of that. These these digital products are going to go in depth. So, so if someone needs credit card restoration or credit card repair, I, I got a whole thing in there that's going to walk you through step by step what you need to do. That's not my thing. I don't want to be on video trying to go through all this. I'd rather give you information that you own, that you can go back to, that's all spelled out. It's right there what you need to do. So that's the kind of stuff that's going to be on there. We're going to give you real estate 101. We're going to give you stock market investing 101. We're going to give you index funds 101. We're going to give you credit repair 101. We're just going to give you how to start a business and grow that business 101. Just that detailed, in-depth, something that I don't go into a whole bunch on the YouTube channel because it's just not my forte. I just prefer to, 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 to give you just the, the, the high level stuff and then I want you to go out and do the work for all the the rest of it. That's kind of how I do on the YouTube channel. But but the website is going to help do all that work for you because it's going to have that in there. So be on the lookout for that. And then I'm telling you, we're going to change the game with the mentoring section, though, because that's going to be exclusive. It's going to be a few of y'all where y'all going to have access to me every single week, not live stream format like we do on the YouTube videos. This is going to be just a select group of us. I don't know, maybe 50, 100 of us just on there every week talking about cash flow, talking about businesses, talking about whatever you guys need to talk about. And matter of fact, even I will, y'all can give me homework. Hey, Richard, this is what I want you to talk about next week. Think about this. Give me that homework. I'll prepare for a week and then I'll come back and give you my opinion on it. That's the kind of stuff we're going to be doing in the membership, right? We're going to be doing that. Plus, in the membership, we're going to be doing meetups where I'm going to be coming to different cities, small group of people, though. I'm not trying to be some Grant Cardone where I got 10,000 people in there. I'm talking about small, intimate groups of people where we're going to actually go out and look at real estate. We're going to, it's going to be a lot of good stuff. I'm going to actually bring CPA, CPAs on the mentorship uh, live streams. I'm going to have all, t all types of people coming on. I'm, I'm going to have Coach Prime on there with me. But all of that's going to be through the website. None of this YouTube stuff because, and it's not putting it on YouTube. It's going to be all exclusive on the website. And, I'm gonna, and I know a lot of people, guys. I mean, I know a lot of people. A lot of business people. A lot of athletes. A lot of entrepreneurs. I just know a lot of people that I'm going to have from all walks of life that will be a part of the live streams that are going to be on the mentorship. So, be on the lookout for that next week uh, coming. And, 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 and then, of course, I'll be more than available to answer any questions that people might have. So, well, guys, I appreciate you. Let's see what I got here. I got a couple left, and then we're going to get out of here. Let's see what we got here. MPR underscore Will. Check out SH. Check out SMH. We'll screenshot that, and we'll check that one out as well. Let me just screenshot that one. So that way I have it. Okay, I got that one screenshotted. Uh, MPR, thank you for the suggestion. Let's see what else we got here. How can I access the trillion, trillion dollar research lab? That's Google, man. Just go to Google. That's the trillion dollar research lab. That's Google. Just go to Google. That is the one trillion dollar research lab. All right, Google. Just go to Google. Use that search bar up top. Type in anything you want and boom. 
Google does all the research for you. It's the $1 trillion research lab. So go ahead and access that. Well, guys, appreciate you. Appreciate you walking with me. Y'all been so gracious this morning. I love this two and a half hours we got to spend together. Do me a favor. If you know somebody that might want to take a look at this, send them the video. It'll be in video format here in a few minutes once we get out of the live. So send it to somebody that you think would appreciate it. Um, and, and I would appreciate it. Again, I appreciate all of you guys allowing me to be a part of your team, allowing me to be able to uh, express myself, be who I am. Um, I appreciate that because a lot of YouTubers can't just be themselves on here. They feel like they got to be something else, whatever the algorithm want them to be. I don't know, but y'all know me. I'm just who I am. I give it to you exactly the way I am in real life. I'm giving it to you right here. I, don't, I ain't sugarcoat nothing, right? And, and, and I appreciate y'all allowing me to be able to do that, just to be me, just to be my authentic self. So I appreciate you guys for rocking with me. I appreciate you guys for believing in me. It's been four years we've been doing this thing and it's continuing to grow. Yeah, we have a few little setbacks here and there, but that's okay. For all in all, it's been a great run for me and I plan on continue doing this. So please continue to rock with me, continue to allow me uh, into your filter system. I promise you only good things, only good things that I give you. I concentrate on solutions, not problems. Now, every now and then I'm a human being. I might go off the handle on somebody that get in here and I, I go that crazy. I, I may have to sidebar them or, or excommunicate them since I know how to do that now on these chats. I know how to go in and, and ban you from the channel. So you won't act stupid and I catch you. You're excommunicated. So I know how to do that now. I didn't know how to do that last live screen. So now I know how to ban knuckleheads. So if, if, if you become a knucklehead, I'm going to ban you. So know that. So I appreciate it, guys. Thank you very much. I think I got another super chat here. I had to tell you. Oh, okay. I got that one already. I just want to make sure I ain't missing no super chats before I dial out. Okay. I think we're all good. So all right, man. I appreciate y'all. Have the rest of your good day. Um, oh, somebody else gave me another suit. How can I? Oh, I, I got that one already. I hope y'all have a rest of a good Sunday. Again, appreciate y'all rocking with me. Um, again, man, go down to the description box. Hit all the links down there. Uh, the, the Instagram, follow me there. Hit them two links. Moomoo Moo is the, the, the priority link. Hit that Moomoo. Moo. If you want to try out uh, uh, Weeble as well, hit that one as well. All free stock. Do your thing. That's a way of saying thank you to me, giving back to me because I give so much to you guys and I appreciate that. Be on the lookout for the website next week. I'll be back tomorrow morning, 1030 a.m. Eastern time with our normal format. We do Monday through Friday, which is all that financial news. I'll be back. I don't answer questions doing those, but I give you all the financial up to date news so that you know everything that's going on in our economy. You know everything that's going on with the Fed. You know everything that's going on with the White House. You know what's going on with interest rates. You know what's going on with inflation. And you, most importantly, know what's going on when it comes to the stock market and investing that money to get to that wealth. You know all of that by following me. So I'll see you tomorrow morning at 10.30 a.m. Y'all continue to have a great Sunday. Thoughts become things. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hands. You guys keep chasing your greatness. Never stop believing in yourself. Stay healthy. Get wealthy. Looks like I got one more super chat, guys. Sorry about that. I can't, I can't roll out of here without... I know you recommend SPLG, but how many stocks or do I need to invest to actually make it worth my while eight to 10 years? I don't know about that, Maria. You got to figure out what you're trying to accomplish. I don't know. I don't know if, it, if it's going to be worth your while or not. All I can tell you is if you want to send me an email, I'll send you my wealth transfer video. It'll outline the three investments I'm buying. It'll tell you what the historical uh, ROI has been on on these investments. And then you can make your decision. Right. You got to figure out where you want to end up and what type of investments will get you to where you want to end up. Right. So, you know, I know SPLG, honestly, for most people, SPLG is all you need. But I know people don't want to believe that because they think there's some secret sauce. There's something to this thing. No, SPLG is all you need if you just be patient. 
8 to 10% rate of return over the last 90 years because it's tracking it. Now, SPLG ain't been around for 90 years, but the S&P 500 that it tracks has been around for 90 years. SPLG, SPLG just tracks it. It's, a, it's an ETF that tracks it. But that's all you need for most people. Just that one investment will do it. So if you commit to 10 years of just that, I think you give yourself a chance to be successful. But again, if you want the bigger video, send me an email and I'll send it to you. But I appreciate the super chat, uh, Maria. Thank you so much. Well, all right, guys, I'm out of here. Peace.